Welcome to the season two premiere of Load In, Load Out, a tour story podcast recorded in Athens, Georgia, in association with Kindercore Industries. This week, we're back in the saddle again with part one of a discussion with the agenda. Ryan and Cash sat down with several members of Ryan's old band for a little group therapy. Topics include, but are not limited to, diving into unsuspecting drum kits, bringing Cornholio 10 years too late to the coolest people on the planet, and lewd ballads sung to famous people. And I feel really Uh, outnumbered right now. I'm the only non-member of the agenda. You are. That's true. You could probably be in the band if you want to. We got Um, Bill. (laughs) Bill's on my team, too. I can't promise we'll ever do anything again, but if you want, we could just say you guys are in the band. (laughs) All right. Um, I do think on the way over, I noticed that it was a full moon outside, and I was like, I was thinking back to times when I thought that I would probably never talk about the agenda again, like when I was so done with it, and I was just like, man, what would it take for me to sit in a room and talk with those dudes again about all those things? And I was like, a a fucking full moon in 2017. (laughs) Donald Donald Trump is president. president. (laughs) It's literally like a science fiction nightmare. This is what it took to get us here. And the Baron Stain Bears. Baron Stain Bears. Those goddamn bears. Um, So, uh, so yeah, anyway, I guess let's first start by going around... um, and saying, yeah, this is uh, my old band, The Agenda, that I've often talked about. In doing a little research for this podcast, I've realized some of the stories I've told have not been true or taken place <laughs> at different times and different locations. So, you know, there's that. But anyway. You know, we were talking uh, about, about false memories a couple yeah, of yeah, episodes Yeah, yeah, totally. Ago. There you go. Yeah, I mean, there's, yeah, I've already figured out three things tonight before this episode that I've said that were incorrect on the podcast in the past, but whatever. They were true in different situations. <laughs> you know, we're those stories. They take you seriously, not literally. They were true from a certain <laughs> point of view. Um, yes, not, don't take me literally. Um, so this uh, here is Justin who sang. Hello. Also did the vocals on our theme song. Yes, uh, actually, right. yes. Also the singer on the theme song for the podcast. And then next to him is Dan. Dan. I play tambourine. <laughs> you play keyboard. You played play keyboard tambourine. in the band. <laughs> you played keyboard in the band. He did mostly play tambourine. <laughs> but I, no, no, no. I will I say, I was listening to that Jackrabbit show that I found the recording of, right. and like you played organ all over it, and it was great. Oh yeah. In the beginning, you played a lot of organ. Like we were sounded much more garagey. I think as we went on, it got crazier. You were just like, oh, whatever, and just jumped you can around. Hear me after a while. No, I think yeah. as, as we went on, his fucking keyboard was more broken. More broken. We <laughs> broke it while we went along. <laughs> um, is, so, it, is it an old Farfisa? Oh no! No, it no. Like, no. It was an old Casio. <laughs> it was like a Casio that was actually like a good Casio. Yeah, it sounded pretty it was good. An actual synthesizer that Casio used to make in the '80s called like a CZ100 or something. And it was an actual synthesizer. When you talk, you probably should lean closer to the microphone. I'm so loud. I'm sure that I can hear you. I'm in the room with you, but I don't know what it's going to sound like on the recording. All right, so it was actually an actual synthesizer that Casio made, but instead of having knobs, it was all, like, LED digital. Oh, that's right. So you had to keep hitting the button to get the sound to change and stuff. But then I ran it through that Nord... Uh, micro Nord, which was way ahead of its time, which was a little box that you could put plugins in back in yes. the like, 90s. So it was like like DX plugins. That's where the organ box. sound came from, right? Um, no, that was the filter. Remember? Oh, the sure. <laughs> oh yeah, that's all over that recording. Yeah. We'll then, probably drop some of that the recording. The organ in. was actually in in the Casio thing. Okay, and it sounded good. Yeah, it sounded like actually, record. I was surprised. Yeah, um, and then also on the couch we have Matt. Hi, I'm Matt. I played the drums. Yes, you did. And Matt is my brother. Um, also, he's all of our brother. We're all brothers, guys. Yeah. yeah um, after what we've been through. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Preach. Um, but uh, uh, but Matt was not the first drummer. No. In the agenda. Steve. Steve. Steve Scarborough. Steve Scarborough, who who we know and love to this day, was our uh, initial okay. drummer. Because I was looking back on some notes that I had, and it was like November two thousand one. You and Dan decided you, to try and start a band. For a second. I want to say something that I haven't said before that I really appreciate about Ryan. What? You keep a lot of notes. Yeah. <laughs> like I guess, someone, because I have no until, memory. Until I've started doing, like, working with you and we're working on this project and, yeah. and all that stuff, I would never have pegged you for a notes guy. But you take a lot of notes. I have to. I don't take any notes on anything ever. Yeah. And it shows. 
Yeah, I'm just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm I'm kidding. I'm sure you might remember more than I do because I literally I, that's why I take so many notes because I don't remember anything. Yeah, I have books and books filled, but usually it's just the act of writing and, it down. And I just did and exactly what my brother. Again. He's like, I love your podcast, but you're kind of the guy who always derails everything, and goes off into something different, and I just totally did it again. <laughs> My brother Denny was telling yep. me about that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Denny. Yeah. Um, just tell him a few more times and maybe it'll actually take. Yeah. Um, but I want to so, say that. You take a lot of notes and I appreciate that. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad. I, that's good. Justin that makes me feel good. Um, yes, Justin does. And which, yeah, okay. So first though, I just, yeah, like let's just start at the beginning. So you guys decided you wanted to start a band. Yeah, me and Dan. Like I uh, didn't know you. You no, had just moved to town uh, well, maybe? Or? We had met. Yeah. We met at the uh, taco stand one night. Okay. Uh, at like rock and roll trivia. Yes. When, oh, man. And you were. Can we just have a minute for our rock and roll trivia team that was seriously? It was Ballard Leesman, Dan, Gordon Lamb, I was and I. thinking about that. Yesterday. And they told us we couldn't so win weird. anymore. Remember? We won so much. We had a $150 bar tab, and they said, you can keep coming and playing, but you just won't count we anymore. We were the dream team. We had every yeah. era. Yeah. Because like, I would come up with the like 80s yeah it like, was it was Britney fantastic stuff, and yeah then you guys knew everything else it was awesome. insane yeah anyway sorry go ahead <laughs> no Thanks. no um so yeah we met uh at taco like stand. you came out to trivia one night or something yeah and we just uh you the four corners record had just come out and you were okay. right about to go on tour yeah and so Great record and yeah. then have 9 11 happen no and well it was before that and you were like uh blah 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 something about Oh, I told you, you were like, have you played music before? And yeah. I was like, I was in like a garage band. And what I meant by garage band was like a band. <laughs> in a garage. In a garage. Not like an actual garage and, rock band. And you were band. like, oh, cool, cool. And then um, you're like, what do you play? And I was like, I, I I know how to play the top string of a bass. <laughs> 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 and uh, and then that, that was kind of it. And then we were like friendly. We would talk yeah, to yeah. each other when we would see each other. But like Dan and me were friends. And Dan was like. I want to start a band with you. And so we had got it in our head. We were going to start like a electro punk yeah. or like a, a dance punk thing. Even before like dance punk was even like. A it was right at the beginning of that yeah. stuff happening, right? So we talked about it and talked about it and talked about it, but nothing ever happened. And then Dan, the Four Corners had broken up. Yeah. Like and you and I left the Sunshine Fix. And you, uh, you were like, "Oh, you guys have a band?" Yeah, totally. I was like, <laughs> no, "I need a new band." There is, like, I have a very vivid. I memory. thought you guys practiced once, yeah, and it I was have terrible. A very vivid memory of us being in the garage with him. You with were there. Me? Yes. When you got really drunk, so you would sing and you went sing and you went sing and you went sing. I do remember in our sing. first in the first agenda practices, you would just sit there while we were and you were writing and stuff. Yeah. But we were like, "When is this guy gonna fucking sing? When is yeah, this gonna no, happen?" I was like, uh, it was like waiting for Fonzie to. Well, cause I didn't, really, <laughs> you know, I didn't really know you guys. It was like, it was like no, totally. And I mean, honestly, I the was way also like twenty two. Right, we were older and had but done stuff. Really we had toured. That first time oh yeah, I'm yeah. sure I did. I was yeah. like. No, I was like nervous. And I had no idea what you, I mean, we didn't know what you were going to do. And then right. you started screaming and it was like, all right, here we go. This is good. Well, even then we just did, we just learned Teenage Kicks by the Undertones. Yeah. Because in the beginning you guys didn't want a drummer. Were you there in my garage? Yeah. Because okay. you said you didn't want a drummer and that's, yeah, it, was it was like, okay, be... let's see if we can make this happen. Because in my notes I have that <laughs> Dan and Justin uh, decided to start a two piece the two piece sucks, so Ryan joins on guitar. The three piece sucks, so he, <laughs> we get to get on bass and Steve on uh, and and Steve on drums. Yeah. We hope you're digging our season two opener. We've got some great stuff coming up for you guys, and like a kid with conjunctivitis, we're excited to share. Head on over to Kindercore.com for the finest in CDs, T-shirts, and out-of-print vinyl. Donate some funds to help the engine run, or just drop by and say hello. Over the course of the next few weeks, we'll be launching an exciting new podcast, Wild Combinations with DJ Mahogany. Each episode, the aforementioned Mr. Mahogany and an esteemed guest will trace the through line of the career of an entertainer, covering their music, film work, and, uh, well, their sexual footprint. Coming soon to Kindercore.com, iTunes, and wherever y'all cop your podcasts. Now back to our show. Um, we got Matt on drums because it was relatively close to when we were going to start touring, I think, and we needed a drummer. And our Matt's mom, my stepmom, actually suggested it, I believe. 
I think so. Yeah. 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 Like said, hey, what would you think if Matt, instead of going straight to college, took a year off and went on tour with you guys? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's an important thing to mention is that, yeah, you all were like in your mid Oh yeah, twenties, and I was fresh. School. Yeah, yeah. At, at, at that point, I think like fresh out of high school, planning on going to college. Um, Put off at of Oberlin, right? I did. I <laughs> yeah. did. Uh, Forever in the end, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm best you, thing that could have happened. You, to me, you still think. never went there. Oh no, you don't, you don't go there now. Go to do where? You? I, I was going to go to Oberlin in so Ohio. We, so we liberal, we kept you from becoming a pretentious ass. <laughs> you tried. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Matt, so Matt joined the band, and for you, like that was had to be super weird. Like you, almost without much notice, moved to Athens, and were our drummer, right? Yeah, I mean, the way I remember it is, you guys were touring, like doing a, a handful of shows out of town with Steve, uh-huh. and you guys were going through. DC, yes. where, where I was living. That's where we played that show. At. Oh, that's right. You it guys was, played yeah. that show. Okay, so yeah. you, we uh, played like a high school show. Yes. Right? Yeah, like an outdoor festival uh-huh. that was at a uh-huh. high school. Uh, yeah, yeah. And you guys, we weren't even really on tour. We just drove up from. Africa. I think that's, oh, that's what right. it was. Okay. We just yeah. went up for that and, show. And yeah. So the the punk band <laughs> that I was in at the time was playing that. So you guys got to see me drum, and uh, you know, I got to actually meet. The people that I was going to be in the band with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, because that was before we had. That was before we had decided, or that that Matt was even a suggestion. Oh no, that was that was after. It was, was it? already yeah? Because I remember because I was setting up my drums uh, behind the stage, and and Steve was there. That's right. Uh, yeah, it was and, super and, awkward. Well, it, it it was he was really nice, and then he, he was just like, uh, "This is sort of weird." Us, you know, I'm sort of hanging out with my replacement. <laughs> yes, because that was going to be his last show with us, right? I think. Yeah, that was the yeah, last yeah. one. Yeah, I think okay. that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. So he oh, knew, okay. and then yeah, and then of course we all stayed at the. Family family's house or whatever and it's fine again we're all friends like yeah. it's not you know um but it is pretty so when it's i met pretty you, funny you how that whole thing went down school? yes when you met me i was not playing with the agenda yet i was in pocket rockets i was with pocket on rockets team beat. yeah on as team a teenager records. so you're both mm-hmm. in bands on team beat i didn't realize you guys were still in high school no wait you know what at that fe- at that that thing that where we met where it was the party afterwards i do remember saying someone telling them me not to give you guys alcohol because you were <laughs> of age yet. And I was oh, like, oh, oh come okay. on. <laughs> um, yeah, no. It's just uh, a suggestion. The, the folks on, on, uh, at Teen Beat Records were really happy to have actual teenagers right. on yeah. the label. Mark, Especially Mark at that point when that. it was old, people were older than mm-hmm. they'd been at the beginning. Um, yeah, so, so then Matt joins and moves down to Athens. And, uh, and so, yeah, this sort of brings us to like where everything went crazy and got weird and hilarious and upsetting and everything else was when we went on that first long tour yeah uh which so, was in september 2002 yeah we, i, I want to this probably won't make this lean in have we been have we been signed to the british label yet? no no that right happens right. after that long tour okay. that happens during our two-week tour with jet by day so the agenda Wait, timeline we should have told the, the first show story that story is amazing oh yeah the first show yeah that's a good show yeah that at the ultra mod so like r.i.p the ultra mod compound the quick quick timeline is we started the band uh, in like late 2001 uh, yeah we practiced uh we put up flyers everywhere all over town for like months yeah like, just like oh yeah that's right our propaganda yeah flyers, we just put like, up like propaganda flyers everywhere shit. yeah 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 and like uh that's right solid. that's a great idea yeah it, it was, worked it totally fucking just worked. just wait <laughs> yeah <laughs> no and so like we just put up these flyers for like months we hadn't played any shows nobody we didn't written out hardly any songs i don't think at I, that no point. we had like six songs yeah we had like crash. I remember crash. sitting in my living room and making up all the bullshit that we were gonna use, like for the things, and then photocopying them. And yeah. Making, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we spent way more time thinking about like, yeah. stuff to do. I think that was what I had a copy than, than writing songs. We were we were together for ten years and we wrote like twenty songs. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we weren't together for ten years continuous. No, but we were together yeah. for like three years and we were together for three years. And we still wrote twenty fucking. Twenty songs. might be optimistic too. Yeah. it may have been less than no, twenty. No, 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 it was twenty. Was it? Okay, yeah. all right. I have them all written down. The, yeah, yeah. Speaking of notes, apparently this is the notes band. Yeah, I um, see that. But uh, I hope you appreciate that. I do appreciate. Okay, that. good. Um, so, uh, so anyway, before that first show, 
like everyone was like, who the fuck is this band? The agenda. Some people were mad about it. Like some people like were just like, what the fuck is this? This is ridiculous. This is bullshit. Blah blah blah. Especially a bunch of like kids in the punk scene that well, we no, didn't know. That was know. before that. I thought that was where it all started. No, no, it was more like kind of like old, older indie rock scene people that oh, uh, were just like they were uh, just uh, they're just I don't know. We were assholes. Like, yeah, in retrospect, absolutely. We yeah. were fucking totally. We were totally like snotty assholes especially me and i mean that was and the I band's wasn't friends personality with all. yeah and i mean i wasn't friends with those people and they that's were, true at then and so it, it, no it, but anyway and then uh, around the same time there was also the break heartbeat was starting too, yeah and they were doing a lot of the same just talking shit right that we were doing so our first agenda show <laughs> so we created a rivalry with them right, before we, we were, had the show we yeah were we like, created this rivalry <laughs> with, with this band we were friends with was was it intentional rivalry oh rivalry? yeah 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 absolutely yeah it yeah was, but there was definitely oh there was some real well, animosity was, some there. real animosity like later I guess. later well, not really even i think animosity. among certain members there was animosity maybe, not even animosity you know. just like we were both you know they were trying to get signed. I think some of the bravado like got in. Yeah, actually, just, there was literal competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was what. Yeah, yeah, it was. It wasn't animosity, but there was definitely some competition. Yeah, and we so, all know how I feel about that. You don't so, like it. It's not a game. We can all win. <laughs> so the Dan very, wants everyone to get a trophy. Very first show ever, and was at the Ultramod comp- compound. Yeah, I don't have. I don't know the date. It was like very close to here. It was right. Before South by Southwest. It would have been in March, probably. March 2002. It was probably, I think it was the week before South by Southwest. Yeah. Like that Saturday or Friday yep. or Friday so or so. Before you'd even played a show, you'd already had South by Southwest. All right, but here's the reason why we had South by Southwest. Because that became, that was the big controversy yeah, that, that the, pissed everybody off. The real reason that we played South by Southwest is because Dan and I had run a fucking record label for a long time and had sold out South by Southwest Showcase for years at that point. And of Montreal was supposed to be playing our the Kinder Course South by Southwest showcase that year, and they dropped out. So with like a week's notice and or two weeks' notice, and the four corners had broken up, and the four corners had broken up, at which we had already known, so we were prepared for that. But like we were already down. So when of Montreal dropped out, the we decided no, to have Maserati the, took their place, and four corners or we took the four corners. Oh, okay, place. is that what it, it was? was? Both bands okay. went and yeah. played. So, but anyway, so whatever the <laughs> the point of it was. That it wasn't like we, you know, applied for South by Southwest and got in because of whatever. It was because we had done the hard work of running a record label for years and having sold out showcase. Like the thing that made me mad about people getting mad about that was I was like, yeah, fuck you guys. Like this wasn't just like it wasn't like Dan and I sat around and then we were like, oh, here, we'll just play. Like, we, you know, we bust our asses for years doing those shows, getting, you know, having good sold out shows and stuff. And so when we went and played, that was why. Well, and things were also different then. Like, they let us curate our own show. Right. Like, they yeah, yeah. bring Kindercore bands. Right, right. No, so that we was my point. bring bands that weren't sure. Kindercore. Sure. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guess that was the thing is that people were like, well, why are you guys? And it was like, because we're on the label, because it's us. Right. Like, that's so, the perk of doing all the work. So yeah, yeah so <laughs> exactly. first show ever at Ultramod was like a th- we. Had, there was an article in the Fire Pole about our yeah, first show before we, it happened. Yeah, we right? had we had done our, I mean, propaganda worked. Yeah, our propaganda worked. Everybody came out. We were young and we knew everybody. And there were yeah, it was we like three hundred people at that show. It was oh, insane. Easily, yeah, there yeah. were people all into the all into the yard, all through the house. Like it was completely slammed. And you went, that was your first injury, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, so that was my first <laughs> show. That you'd really ever played with Well, anybody. I mean, I played with my, like, little brother in Augusta. Yeah. Like, when I was in, in your garage. Yeah. Like, we'd played, like, two shows ever. Right. So this was, like, my third show in my entire <laughs> life. And uh, I was, like, n- not, not, like, mo- you know, like, a lot of people didn't know me your in town. Brother, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Turf War, John. Turf War, illegal Turf, drugs. Turf John. War, illegal gr- drugs, John. Yeah. yeah. Um. So we, you know, it was this packed show. There were a lot of people definitely there. Just there were people there to see us fail, see us as fail much as sure. see us to enjoy it. But then, they, but then there were all, like all of our friends. We were still young. Yeah. Like we knew everybody in town. We actually went out all the time then. Yeah. And so, and then Break Heartbeat also, it was yeah. all their friends. So it was like 300 people like packed into the Ultramod. And we fucking killed it. Yeah, it was great. And and, and then you. But then I <laughs> I was so geeked up. And I had, oh, I like that. Geeked up. Nobody I was so says geeked that up anymore. And I was, I had watched uh, 1991, the year punk. <laughs> yes, I love, the, I love that, that. I didn't know that before. Yeah, I, love I watched that. 1991, the year uh, punk. Yes. Like 
on VHS yes. like two two days before the show. <laughs> and so at the end of the show, I fucking do- dove into the drum set. Yeah, which, it, which Steve did not know was no, going to happen. No, I there just was like, no warning or anything. No, it wasn't, just suddenly it wasn't even you just planned. dove at it was Steve. just like, yeah. oh shit, I'm going to jump into the drums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I jump into the drums and I grab Steve. And Steve... <laughs> I re- like I grab him and then there's that concrete wall yeah, that's like yeah. right behind the drum set. So yeah. my back slams into the wall and Steve slams into my ribs. Yeah. Breaks my rib. <laughs> <laughs> so before we have to get in the van and drive to South by Southwest to play a show, he's got a broken rib. Yeah. That's so, like a huge black bruise on your side. Oh yeah. Like I I, I had this like tiger bomb shit that I was putting it was on it insane. constantly. And I had this giant rash. Who, who, who told you where the tiger bomb on? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, yeah, so you put Tiger Bomb on. So I put this Tiger Bomb. I had this fucking orange rash from my nipple <laughs> down to my like fucking ab- abdomen. It was just huge on the side of my head. I was in so much pain, like riding in the you know in the car on the way there. Yeah, yeah. And then we had like our show was like the third night, I think. Yeah. So, so, so we like, were all being crazy. Doing so stuff. I was just like, yeah, drinking, drinking, Wasting. drinking. Like, A common theme with the agenda was drinking. Yeah, I, that was the at my most drinkingest point of my life, and it was a lot of drinking. It was like drinking. A pint of whiskey a night sometimes. It was in it was absurd drinking. Yeah, there was a lot yeah. of stupidity in that. <laughs> um, <laughs> we made dumb choices, but we had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. But that so that first tour we had to get a van to go on tour. And um But that and, was before the this was before the band van we were Oh that show, yeah. Yeah, yeah we right. rode we split uh, members between Maserati's van. Yeah, oh that's right. That's right. Because they, they were coming out to too, so, in, yeah. So it was like World Trade, yep. The Agenda, and Maserati played some shows on the way back. So we like half of us rode in Maserati's band. That's a us, that's a crazy lineup. It was a weird lineup. Yeah, yeah. but, but yeah, I mean, it was yeah, fun though. It was fun, and like you know, we played like three shows or something like yeah. that. I don't even remember. I think we played like Texas, Louisiana. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. That's right. We played a show in in New Orleans. It was uh-huh. our second show, and uh, there were three people there. <laughs> After and, we had played to 300 people and yeah. then before we played to South by South. There were three people out. there and um, I fucking broke the microphone. <laughs> so we didn't make any money. Oh, we that's right. Because they made us pay for the microphone. We had to pay for the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Because that was the beginning. Because another ongoing theme was being like me making you tape, duct tape the microphone to the mic cable. Yeah. Right. Because like the first few shows, like the microphone would, would come unplugged off. and the mic would fly off to like, and then it would get broken. Yeah. And so then we started bringing our own microphone too. Right. I think mm, at one no. point we had well, our own yeah, microphone. I think when we actually went on tour, yeah, yeah, I, I, was like, I just okay, got a be- crappy <laughs> microphone and I would give it to the sound guy. I was like, I'm going to beat the shit out of this thing. So please just don't let tape me it to the cable. A, yeah. Then this is the only mic I'm allowed to use. Right. You know, that has stuck with me. The fact that we paid for that. I didn't know where that came from, but it yeah. was part of my like, understanding of being in a band and I having to pay for broken equipment around a lot too and i always bring my own and i was playing with malman over uh, just a couple weeks ago in minneapolis and he was like we'll just use one of their mics and i was like well i might break it and he's like well so and i'm like well then they'll make us pay for it he's like no one does that (laughs) i'm like yeah they do (laughs) they do when three people come to your show they might not when your show actually has people i was playing with my band ruby isle in minneapolis Uh, really oh cool um so, so yeah. So anyway, in the interest of, you know, moving it along moving to the crazy stuff, so then, we, um, so we had to get a van though. We had to get a van. Right. And I think it was Dan, cause you were friends with, with Macha, right? Weren't you friends with Josh? And so, I mean, we're all, we all knew him, but I mean, like, I think you were the one that was friends with him and you were like, Macha's going to sell their van. It's got some issues or whatever, but we should take a look at it. And this was like, everything about the agenda was not well thought out like we didn't plan well enough ahead we didn't have enough money to get a van to go on tour we couldn't figure out how we were going to do it i think we went up pulling together like 1500 bucks or something two thousand dollars two thousand dollars yeah we had we got a two thousand dollar advance from telegraph or whoever the hell okay owned yeah the label at that point yeah they gave us two thousand bucks that we bought Dwayne. uh-huh the van. You the can call it a van, but I, I consider Dwayne a cursed object. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so Dwayne, who had two sculptural keychains of the name Dwayne spelled two different ways, because everybody would be like, "Well, how is Dwayne spelled?" And we had two keychains, and they were, and they had been given to us by Matcha, and it was the two different spellings of Dwayne. Uh, that had been Bedhead's van first in Texas, so Bedhead toured with it a long time, and then Matcha toured with it a long time, and then we got it. And the floor was partially rusted out. The heat didn't work. Um, 
it was a fucking nightmare. It and would the overheat. radiator blew up on the way to our first show yeah, out of town. Yeah, it, it would overheat every time you would go over 60 miles an hour. <laughs> Which so, is like, inconvenient on the highway. Yeah, so yeah, like yeah, like leaving Athens, like yeah. our first show, the thing just started to overheat. And yeah, we, so we were late to that first show, I remember. Like, yeah, we got there really in, late. Like North Carolina, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, we were like two hours late. We had yeah. to literally like, we showed up, loaded on, played. Yeah. And, uh, and that was the beginning of Dwayne breaking down constantly. Constantly, yeah. I have so many pictures. Let's not forget the hole in the roof. Oh, oh right yes. Right well, not just that, but the floor that was so rotted out. Do you remember there was the time, there was this like week that we were playing in the Northeast, and you, it's in our dates somewhere, but we were playing around in like New York State and stuff or, or up there in the Northeast somewhere, and there was this rainstorm, and we kept circling back into it. like, And so all of our stuff was soaking wet. And we never, like, we couldn't get dry. Like, and it was October, I think. And so it was really cold. All of our equipment was getting wet. All of our clothes were wet. We were wet. And there was no heat in the van. And we were just driving and driving in these circles. And then we played a show on our way to play a show somewhere. We broke down in the toll booth. Um, <laughs> on, so I, I've got a, t- I've outside got a of timeline Albany. Oh, that's for nice. Okay. Yeah. I've got a t- uh, uh, So <clears throat> first thing that happened was the radiator. Yeah. Uh, then... Uh, we, as we're coming back from the East Coast, like for that first leg of the tour, we blew out like a a belt, like a torn, yeah, like a couple of hours outside of Athens, and we were stranded till five o'clock in the morning. When wait, what was that guy's name? It was the guy who was missing the two middle fingers on both his hands, yeah. so he was constantly making rock hands. <laughs> yeah. And we also had we had a uh, twelve pack or a case of Rolling Rock, I think, that we had gotten from some show that was warm. And we gave it to him, and when we came back the next day, he had drank the entire case warm, his wife told us. And he was the garbage man and drove the garbage truck totally wasted, having drank all that beer, (laughs) after he spent all night trying to fix our van. The guy was in... I wish I could remember his name. It was in Eatonton, though. Yeah. Because when we... when. That story of getting pulled over. That, was, yeah, that's what happened. Okay, is we yeah. got pulled over, and when the car, we couldn't get it to go. We got pulled we, over because the the light bulb for the tail light fell down into the bottom of the truck. So the guy did, didn't see one and thought we had a tail light out. So he pulled us over, and remember when he pulled us over, he was like you know, what are you, what are you boys doing or whatever? And we tried to act like we were, you know, Joseph was with us at that point, wasn't he? Cause I don't he, think, so. I think he, mm-hmm. oh, okay. He wasn't. No. He, okay. He, this was the, this was the first leg of the okay. tour. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we were, and we were about to be home. Like people were, yeah, like people we were, had like dinner two hours ready away. for us and everything. And then we were there until somebody came and picked us up at five in the morning. Dan came and got us at five in the morning or okay. Amy did. It, one of somebody, yeah. Amy or Dan came and got us from a convenience store that had fried chicken. Yeah. I remember that. So that was leg one. We got it fixed. <laughs> we got Dwayne fixed. Then we uh, were heading to Florida. We played some shows in Florida. On the way from Tampa to Miami, we blew a tire out. Yes. And we didn't have a fucking jack. Well, no. We, it had. Remember, we had the. It had the weird long lug nuts that oh, nobody and, had a oh, lug right. that could get. And yeah, so the AAA. Know. We were waiting for AAA. And I remember, remember. Do you remember the AAA guy did a U turn on the other side of the divided highway yeah. and quit AAA? No. Like so, what happened? Like he was pulling up to answer the call. And we, it was like a bunch of band people because Maserati had stopped with us, I think, yeah, or something. Was, and we were yeah. trying to put our stuff we in their van this, and we, we were, were s- doing all this. Yeah, we're sitting on the side of the road playing uh, Danzig songs yeah. on acoustic guitar. So, And this guy driving on the other side of the divided highway in the tow truck saw us and left. And then we called AAA back and they were like, I'm sorry, we have to send a new driver because that driver was like, fuck these guys, I'm not helping them. And then they got, and for some reason it had these lug nuts on the wheel that were like extra long and no tire iron would fit over them. And so he had to use some kind of crazy like giant pliers or whatever. Uh, so yeah, there was that one. Then yeah, we haven't even talked about uh, Ian yet. We haven't even mentioned his name. Oh, yeah. There's another guy in the band, too. <laughs> oh, I'm the sorry. Bass player. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get to Ian. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we all have Ian stories. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so then after the blown tire, when we were heading back up north, we played a show in Columbia, South Carolina, and our license plate got stolen. <laughs> That's right. We came out of the place, and our license plate got stolen, and we had to go do a police report in Columbia, South Carolina in the middle of the night. About what, like, because we were we were going, yeah, we had a bunch more shows, yeah, so we had to have, like, a legal proof that we had a license plate or whatever. So, yeah, we wrote the number <laughs> so on cardboard. stole our license plate from behind the club. Yeah. And the door guy, remember the door guy saw him do it. 
because the door guy was, no he was he didn't like for whatever reason he was being a dick to us we were probably an asshole to him too but whatever anyway he watched it happen basically and was like oh yeah that was weird I do remember that yeah and we were just like what the fuck man and he was just like yeah you know whatever and so he just basically sat there and watched somebody steal our license plate and didn't tell us until we said like what happened and, and we were like somebody stole our license plate and he was like oh oh yeah I guess somebody was back there you know Fucking hell. Yes. And then finally, on our way to Bennington, Vermont, oh boy. in the toll booth in Albany, New York, we like pulling in and we hear a bang, bang, bang. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing just goes, and just dead. Yeah. And we're stuck in the toll booth. Like it's we had freezing. To jump cold. out and push it out of yeah, the way. Yeah, we'd mm-hmm. push it out of the way. It was like 20 degrees. Yeah. It was like upstate New York. And, and it was like a giant highway toll booth, yeah. too. So there were like tons of cars <laughs> everywhere. Like. <laughs> And Matt luckily had AAA. Oh yeah, we we used that a lot on that tour. <laughs> yeah, you used all of your AAA toes, I'm well, we sure. Had, yeah, no, we, we had we had, we had to, <laughs> yeah, they've now blacklisted you now. <laughs> well, no, we had to use all of the miles just to get it from Albany, New York, to Vermont. Yeah, yeah, they played. they towed us to the gig. Yeah, Absolutely. that's right. They towed us to the college How in Bennington long? where we played. It was like uh, 100 miles, I think. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, bad. it was. But I mean, you or know, 70 for a miles. Tow, it was it was pretty. It was crazy. less than two hours, I think. You know. Yeah. It was like, I don't but then so they towed us to the top of this really tall hill, yeah, where the university, where the college was in Bennington. It was like up this really long ro- dirt gravel road or whatever, right? Like uh, at the maybe it was not gravel. Really, I, don't I don't think know. it was gravel because I've got pictures of. Oh yeah, but yeah, yeah. I've got so it was, pictures of us pushing <laughs> Dwayne down the mount or down the mountain while. Uh, yeah. Maybe you were steering. I think I was steering because I remember what happened was is as soon as we reached the point where like you guys couldn't keep up with pushing anymore, oh, yeah. and I like really took off down the Have hill. A nice little picture book. I the guy somebody said to me, "Okay, you're trying to get to this gas station that's like at the bottom of this really big hill, uh, really big hill. Crank the wheel to the left, and you might be able to make it over this hump right there and get to this gas station." But I could not do that. And instead, I stopped dead at the bottom of the hill right in the middle of traffic. <laughs> and had and the only people that could have pushed me were like a five-minute walk behind me yeah. because they were at the top of this giant hill. So I was just sitting there with people <laughs> honking at me pissed off. So we took it to that place. So wait a minute, though. This is where we introduced Ian because Ian jumped on the van after it started rolling and he was holding on. Oh, he was holding. Way. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. yeah. And there's Ian. So our bass player our bass player was uh, Ian Cohn. Yes. Um, I mean, Ian's amazing. He's like the, hilarious. He's the most loving, lovable dude ever. Yeah. I mean, as much as there were times where Justin and I probably wanted to tear each other's eyeballs out, Ian was the person that in between us we could both be like, we both love Ian, oh, yeah. Ian and Ian loves us. Always cut the tension. <laughs> yeah, totally. He would always do something funny or do something. Pull his shirt over his head. Like, over his head. Gordolio. Gordolio. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> even in front of, even in front of the coolest people in the world at the time. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, just wait till we get to Quite the story. Of, yeah. I think I told the story on the on the Interpol podcast, but of the Dan- Harmar's dance party at backstage oh, or whatever. God, we'll get yeah. to that because Matt has to tell the story of Bobby, the kid. From the sites who had never left Michigan before and tripped on acid at the at the. You remember, do you remember? Oh my God! Yeah, Bobby of the sites. Yeah, yeah. You start thinking about that while we get before we get there. Absolutely. Because that teaser, story is that's teaser. that Gladly. story is solid gold. Um, but right, so Ian's holding out of the back so Ian's, down that whole hill. Ian's holding, he's holding out of his fingers because there's nothing to hold on to. So he has his fingers wedged in the top of the door. And we all saw him go. We're like, Ian. Yeah. Oh, it's like, jump make, off, jump off, Ian jump. Oh. Make the best choices yeah. sometimes. Is that a good way to Which say it? Which is one of the reasons why he's so much fun. Yeah. Like when he great. gave his Guns N' Roses shirt away, which we'll so get to. Yeah, yeah. I was convinced he was going to die at that point. Because we yeah. were going 50 down that hill probably. Oh, I mean, we were cruising. And then when we hit the bottom, it like stopped because <laughs> because of just the geography of the way it was set up or whatever. And that's right, because Ian and I were stuck at the bottom waiting for everybody to catch up to push us out of traffic. Yeah, yeah, because I think I remember Ian and I both trying to push the thing ourselves out of traffic, and it was like, yeah, that's not going to happen. But so we took it to this gas station, and um, they fixed it, they thought. Everybody else went ahead to CMJ. No, okay, so that's not. they couldn't fix it. You because no, 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 I drove it one mile after they said they fixed it and but, then it finally blew up. But you stayed behind and Matt stayed behind. Mm-hmm. Okay. And me, Dan, 
and Ian went on because well, they played okay, shows as us, right? All right, yeah. So we, yes, yeah. So we, they played shows. All right, we had no money, shows. or we, had, you know, most of our shows didn't have good guarantees. Yeah, but we had this thousand dollar guarantee for for the agenda, and I am the World Trade it's a College Center. show, right? It's some college yeah. in New York. I don't know where. It's kind of like Green Room, the movie, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of the most talked about movies on this podcast. So we were like, well, we have to play this fucking show, and yeah. you're like, well. The van is not going anywhere, and I can't leave it. We got to stay and fix it. So we're like, "Fuck it." That's Coley right. was like, "I can learn your stupid songs on guitar." Yeah, and Steve, and Steve was like, "I'll play drums." Was like, I'll play I, drums. I, yeah, so because we were right. with Maserati, so Coley learned three God, songs in the car on the van ride yeah. to the show. This is I'm the only member of the Agenda who's played every Agenda show because yeah. this is the one show Ryan missed. Anyway, play, yeah. So Coley learned Crash <laughs> Crash. Like panic and fifty thousand watts, like uh, on guitar, and then we did a cover of Molly's Lips, the Nirvana uh-huh. version, and then we did Psycho by the Sonics. Okay, so we learned these five songs. We played five songs for five hundred dollars, <laughs> <laughs> and we we're like, Thank you. <laughs> contract, yeah, fulfilled. And then, fulfilled. and then, were and they then, pissed? no. Care. There was like, yeah, there was, it was like the music club or, or the huh. radio station or whatever. And there were like 25 kids. I think it was still, I don't know if that, I mean, actually I would have no idea if that happens anymore, but it was certainly a very important thing during that time of touring. Oh yeah. Like oh, when yeah, you'd have a college, college show that paid yeah. like 500 yeah. bucks or a thousand bucks. Yeah, no, like that yeah. was, that's how we would make money on that yeah. tour is like every like week there'd be like at least one college show. Like the, we played in Pitt. There was one in Idaho that they that they <laughs> left make it to, and yeah. played because there was like black ice on the mountain on the way there and so we had to drive slower and we called them and we could tell like that show was kind of a iffy one anyway because they weren't being very committal to everything and so we got there and there was no and they were watching some they were watching the Tobey Maguire Spider Man movie in the room we were supposed to play in and like they left a note on the door or something that was like sorry couldn't wait like canceled show or whatever. So we had no $300 that we needed. We had no money. We had no money at all. And we had just driven from Utah or no, from Denver, from De- yeah, Denver to Moscow, Idaho, yeah, which is like at the top Ooh, of yeah. Idaho it through, through icy crap and everything. Yeah. Um, we had nowhere to stay, which yeah. we were also supposed to have had that night. I think. Hey, I wasn't here. I no, no, you weren't. I there. think for that one, we might have called somebody's family and had somebody my put it on parents, the credit card. My parents like, put a room on the credit card. They, well, they like put money in my account. Because I so. remember that was the show where we made Ian go into Domino's, and because there was a girl working at Domino's, and we were like, Ian, go get us a pizza. And we were like, we, I don't have any money. And we're like, Yeah, no, I know. Obviously, like, go hit on that. Go, go be sweet to that girl and get us a pizza. One thing we need to mention about Ian is he's, is that he's hot. Yeah. He's a very handsome yeah. man. Yeah, very <laughs> handsome man. And and and, and, and hilarious, uh, but sometimes at the expense of his handsomeness oh, when yeah. he would be in a situation where or he'd have like have some him. beautiful woman who would be totally interested and then he pulls his shirt over his head and he's Cornolio again. <laughs> so um, his judgment may not have been perfect on all those things. But I remember he was like really frustrated and irritated at us that we were going to make him go into this place and try and get us a free pizza. But we were like, you have to. Like, we can't eat. We don't have any money. And uh, and it didn't work. Like, he went <laughs> in. He went, no. He went in and then he came out and he was just like, let's just go. Um, yeah, because I think I. And then we drove to a bar to try and find someone to stay with. We were like, well, maybe if we go to a college bar, we can be like, we're a band and we don't have anywhere to stay. And we totally struck out at that, too. And I think that, that must yeah. have been when you called your family and you were like, yeah, I think I like, lifeline. Called my, yeah, I called my parents and I was like, please put money <laughs> in my account so like I can get we can get a hotel. So we got like a because, shitty hotel room. I remember. Because Unsung after the heroes of so many small bands, the parents. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, for real. I mean, Jesus. The only reason we even made it out west is your parents because Dwayne was dead. Like yeah, after Dwayne th- died in Vermont, and we actually we gave it to the gas station yeah, because they just, had put. I think we had recently had new tires on it, and there yeah. were a couple of things that were like semi valuable. Not really, but it was just like, look, if we just we don't want to have to tow this away. They're like, well, we'll just take it and mark some of your bill off or whatever. And at that point, we had put some silver silhouette truck stop late like uh like truck sexy mud flap ladies. sexy ladies on the side of the car and there was like this 15 year old kid who was working there as like a like an apprentice or whatever and he's like can i have the girls <laughs> <laughs> and i was like yeah man whatever i don't care we're not taking him with us like whatever you want dude but so that van which had the general lease stenciled on the side of it because my brother jesse 
who was in art school in Florida at the time, had painted the General Lee on the side of it when we were on tour. So then Dwayne's like the car was painted on the side of the van. Yes, yes. the car, like the General Lee jumping through right, the air okay, was I'm painted. On, yeah, yeah, because Dwayne was white-ish yellow, yeah. Yeah. I think. Off-white. Um, but uh, more of an a crew is that the off the eggshell? Mother of pearl. Mother of pearl. Yeah. <laughs> um, and. Uh, so, but we found out later, like Maserati went back and played Bennington years later, Many and years they later. and they were like, "Oh yeah, Dwayne's still there." Like we saw yeah, Dwayne it was at, at the least gas two station. Years after that, yeah, yeah, like quite some time. Uh, so then, at that point, yes, to give a shout out to Unsung Heroes, the Lewis family was like, "You, we've." Um, made this terrible choice with our son and told him not to go to college. <laughs> and now we can't let this whole thing fall apart because this entire thing was supposed to be this great learning experience. I, they really didn't say they made a terrible choice. But I mean, like, from my perspective, I was like, oh, shit. Like, they basically had to, like, pony up and bail the whole thing out or else whatever. So they bought a van uh, that we used. Yeah, well, then. I mean, this this was, like, also my first tour. Yeah. Like, one of the early memories that I have of Dwayne and of the tour in general <laughs> is just, I think we had just played in Chicago, and we were heading to, uh, to Waukesha, Wisconsin, to stay with Dan's parents. Uh-huh. And it was, like, every night of that tour, it was raining. Yes. And I was doing it's that thing freezing. that I do when it rains, in the van, I sit in my little back corner <laughs> and I duct tape the ceiling. Around, yes, that's right. There are all kinds of duct tape around the everywhere. seal yeah. where the metal, where there's the seal. I was just pressing the duct tape, and then just as I would see the water push the duct tape <laughs> off, just push the duct tape back, and then wait for it to bubble in up your, in some other in place. Your endless, endless yeah, fight yeah. with water. And then I just remember like this happening. This water will stop eventually, right? Yeah. And then getting getting to Dan's uh, parents' house. We like got there just, in the middle of the night. Yeah, I think. in the middle of the yeah. night, lugging our wet shit into their yeah. house, and just you looking at me as someone who had toured for like years before that. Yeah, two weeks into this tour, <laughs> looking at me, you know, soaking wet in oh, this kitchen, God. just being like, "I don't know. It's never been. Like it's this never. Before. Yeah, this is <laughs> never this been is this seriously. Bad this before. is the worst. <laughs> yeah. Like Justin said, Dwayne easily was a cursed object. Like easily. Yeah. When so you mentioned Chicago though, there's a quick Ian story that is just fucking amazing <laughs> for Chicago. Is so this the Dillinger Four. Yes, oh. this is the Ace of Spades story. Oh. So, so this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, whoever who wants to tell this. I mean, okay, all I'll just start off <laughs> yeah. by saying what I remember was we were playing the show with this band, the Dillinger Four, right? Yeah, they were like a legit like. Yeah, punk and band, like we, a punk yeah, yeah. band. And their main guy, Patty, was friends with Harmar, who we were friends with. And so somehow it was like, you'll be friends with these guys. Yeah, yeah. And so we met up with I them mean, at they were the cool beginning. Guys. Oh, yeah, no, they absolutely. Nice yeah, no, 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 exactly. But that, and I think that's, you know, that's Har- Harmar was like, no, 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 <laughs> check these guys out. You like, you should hang out with them. So we did. And, and somehow it came up that they were going to cover Ace of Spades, right? Like, yeah. that they wanted to do that for some reason. And Ian, <laughs> fucking nowhere, is like, I want to sing, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Ian was like, let me sing, right? And they were like, can you do it? And he was like, oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And they were like, okay, all right, you can do it. So then Ian, I think, realized that he wasn't sure if he could do it. So he sat in the van listening to Ace of Spades over and over again, trying to figure out the words, which he clearly did not know. And then I'll hand it off to either one of who wants to tell the story of him actually getting on stage. I will Come on, so, Dan, yeah. you haven't spoken much. <laughs> oh, I, I, no, oh, Dan my, doesn't the remember. I don't speak is because my memories are so hazy, I don't remember anything. I'm, this is fun <laughs> That's why he's off this, mic. He just sounds in the, he's in the so, distance. So, yeah, like Ian gets up on stage with like, the Dillinger Like, huge crowd, floor. right? Yeah, this was a packed crowd. It our, was their hometown. So, our, first of all, I'll set it up even more. This was like around the time that the R. Kelly P-tape had come out. Yeah. And we're playing in Chicago, and me and Ian kept joking about R. Kelly... And we're playing in front of a Chicago punk crowd. Right. And, and, I and they were in. not, it was, we did uh, not it, go over. No, with that. we didn't go over yeah. at all with this crowd. So that's and right. I, I forgot. So yes, we, they, he had already Ian had ill will with joke, the audience. Ian had made a joke about <laughs> if there are any girls who want to get beat on. <laughs> oh my God. Why? Oh, or, right, or, very it was, timely. It was oh either, yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Peeing on pit things is in the story news again. Um, yeah, so either I... This time it's It was either me or it was him. <laughs> we hear Bill but, laugh. <laughs> I always know I win when I can hear Bill laugh in the background. So... So yeah, Ian had made this R. Kelly P joke, or, or, and the room was not having. No, it. no, yeah, yeah, 
Not a laugh. Not a single. I want to say a bunch of people left too. Like the room was real empty when yeah, we were like, playing. We were yeah, playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then so anyway. So then the Dilger Four gets up. It's like, hey, let's have this guy you hated from the band that you hated come up and sing this song that he better not fuck up because if he does, there'll be hell to pay because everyone loves it. And so, so yeah, they kick into Ace of Spades. I think it was like their closer. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And, yeah, yeah. And, and he's on stage in like a bandana and <laughs> yeah. an aviator sunglasses. I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The That's right, he spent more time working on his head. look. For the thing that he did, not knowing the words. Yeah, and so. Oh like, my God, the I room was going like the room was going crazy when they started playing. Yeah, it, it was, was like, like yeah, yeah, recognition, and, like and, oh and, yeah. Uh, he just like blanked. You yeah, know? he's like, just like he's he just did like, not know the words. Duh, 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 duh. Yeah, and then the fucking bass player he just threw him right or kicked him kicked him in the ass <laughs> off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! And that was, oh. that, was and that show was so yeah. uncomfortable too because oh, the God. room hated us. Oh, they were like God. so. Oh my God! Yeah, like the gender was definitely a love or hate kind of band, and oh, yeah. like so sometimes the love. How was your out relationship well. with the Dillinger Four after that point? Oh, I mean, they were still cool guys. I think yeah, but they were like. What the fuck? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they were, yeah they I just I remember Patty turning to Ian afterwards. Yeah, with that disappointed yeah. sound in his voice. You said you knew the song. Yeah, man. that's right. <laughs> he, said, he said you knew the song, man. Um, <laughs> oh, Ian. Oh, um, uh, and, so yeah. So, so then, oh, go ahead. Oh yeah. no, no, no. I mean, that, that was that was it. For that's that the end of that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give us another one, Dust. Like I like right. this. Let's so, um, do you guys remember our? first New York show when um, we played with the guy who was in Space Hog. Oh, oh yeah, that was our yeah, first New York show. married to oh, Liv Tyler. That was our show at that mm. venue. Remember what was that venue? Oh, it was some venue in Brooklyn. Um, it wasn't the first show. The venue. It really? wasn't, was it Southpaw? I feel like it was. Maybe it was. We were the first show ever there and we were the Was it during band. CMJ? No. No, this mm. was just That a, didn't go I remember we played well shortly there, after Southpaw opened at Southpaw for the, um, yeah, it was uh, South Park. Candy Graham Booking Showcase at CMJ, and South Park yeah. had just opened. So what was yeah. the date of that? September 24th. So that would have been like a month before CMJ yeah. that year. Yeah. CMJ was in that. So just listeners, correct us if we're wrong, but we do think we were the first band to play at Southpaw. Yeah, Paul. if anyone from Southpaw wants to call in to this live podcast we're doing right now, <laughs> just kidding. But, well, um, don't we have like a, can't they like... Yeah, in? yeah, go to the website and complain. Yeah, okay. You know, so this was also the show we played with the Sites. Yes, our first show oh, with yeah, the Sites. Okay. Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's so, right. Um, I forgot we had known them before. Yeah, so, so that was a super weird show. It was a totally weird <laughs> show because we were like two garage bands. We were like a great fit. And like they opened, I think, or maybe we opened it. I don't know. Yeah, sure. we were first. Yeah. In my mind, we were first. Yeah. <laughs> it's important to Dan to think we were the first to play there. So let's just say we went no, on no, first. No, no. I mean, I think we were like. Probably because I think they had a, had a like They were a little more, bit better known than yeah, us. They, yeah. Yeah. So whatever. Anyway. So, you know, we played the show <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, like I said, like. The headliner for the night was that guy, the guy from, guy from Space, Space Hog. Hog. Yeah, it was like his solo thing. Yeah, and it was his w- solo debut, like after Space Hog yeah. didn't work out or whatever. And he was married to Liv Tyler. Yeah. I, I don't know if he still is. And uh, he was like, he was such a like, I don't know, just like so a, was Liv Tyler there? Was, uh, she was there. Was oh. she there? Yeah, she was in the she was oh. in the back. Like, wow. I, cause I remember walking around and I was like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's one of two times I was in the same room as Liv Tyler. <clears throat> that you know of. Yeah. There could have been more. <laughs> but, uh, anyway. So, sorry. uh, like, um, you know, we played our show, sites played. Oh, he, oh, I, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> anyway, so he plays a set and it sucks because it's like space, it's like worse than space. Yeah. Hog. Worse. yeah. yeah. Okay. And like he didn't no even play the space hog. Just him like prancing around or whatever. Yeah, he didn't like, even play the space hog hit. Yeah. So, uh, in the meantime. <laughs> so he, uh, <laughs> Wait, he uh-huh. like stops the show and he's like, I want to dedicate this song to my, my lovely wife. And he's like, I wrote this song. It's called. I fuck you with my love. Oh my God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> True story. And then after. Just wanted to take a moment this week to shine a little spotlight on the Magnolia Fund. Magnolia Fund's a grassroots organization that promotes and supports reproductive justice in Georgia and the South. They work to identify and eliminate barriers to abortion access faced by low-income people by providing grants and practical support to those who can't afford the full cost of an abortion or birth control. 
To that end, if you're in the Athens, Atlanta area, we'll be out in full force at Cine here in Athens on January the 20th, Inauguration Day, for a showing of the bubblegum, chewing, ass-kicking classic, They Live. Plus, a set of music from the reunited band, The Buddy System. There's going to be a silent auction, and the whole event's going to support Magnolia Fund. Join us. Obey. Obey. And then after the show, backstage, didn't he? Didn't he? What did he say to you? Oh yeah, after the after the show, he was like talking to me, and he's like, "Oh, you guys look great." And I think he was British, wasn't he? Yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Definitely. Yeah, and he was if like, not, keep going with the accent. Yeah, he was like, "You guys look great." And he's like, "Blah blah blah." He's like, "Where are you from?" Los Angeles, and I was like, "No, nah, dude, you're from Georgia." Yeah, no, fuck that, dude. We're from Athens, Georgia. Yeah, that was just like talking the way you about talk meeting. about him makes me think of. Uh, uh, Russell Brand, like he's like a Russell oh Brand yes, type that cut from sounds, the same cloth. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah that doesn't doesn't good. seem wrong. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's really funny. I remember actually going back when the Four Corners lived in New York. I guess Space Hog practiced in the same per hour practice place that we were practicing in at one point, and there were no microphone stands in the whole place because he insisted on having all of the microphone stands. So everyone else that practiced had to hold their microphones. Like, I don't know why. I mean, I don't know if there was a, I don't think there was a horn section in there, but like, he was like, he took all the microphone stands to their practice room and it was like, God, oh, I'm sorry. Space hogs using them I was like, for what? But anyway, um, so yeah, that was space hog. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> that was our first trip to New York. So this lawn tour that we were on though, like it was, you know, like for, it was pretty fucked up because it was long. It was a really, and it was, like it was like three, three months. It was three months. Right? Mm-hmm. We Jesus. Or so yeah. So we yeah. we came on for like two days in the middle or three days. I think yeah. it was on there. Yeah. Yeah. Because we played a show at the. So it's old, like one of those tours where you leave looking a certain way and you come back. Yeah. And you've aged like ten years. Also, and like, you. Who the fuck are you? Well, also <laughs> like yeah, and you leave in the summer and come home in the winter. Yeah. Too, was, which was weird. Yeah, you know it was know September I mean? like, when we left. Yeah, it was like hot it, as shit, and, and then came, it was like snowing along the way. We came home after Thanksgiving. Yeah, because we had Thanksgiving at. Mr. Gaddy's All You Can yeah. Eat Pizza in Austin, Texas. So, so yeah, let's talk about that story. I love that story. The Scientology story. Oh, oh yeah. I Scientology love that one. Testing right. Center. Yeah, go go for it, Dan. Yeah. I wasn't there. <laughs> That's why you like I didn't think story. you were. That's right. why when you said that, I was like, this why do you want... This is my favorite agenda yeah. story. No, I wasn't even this there. Is, this is amazing. All right. I mean, I, I remember that we were... Uh, so we were walking around Austin, and it was the beginning of when we had gotten there, right? Because we hadn't, like... That whole Austin yeah, it was right time. We were there for like two days. It was before Thanksgiving. Like we were in Austin for two days, I think, and yeah. we didn't have anything to do. Yeah, so- I, there was a mix up because uh, we were touring with uh, Harmar Superstar and, and the gossip. And the gossip. And um, and Sean Harmar was uh, for a few days leading up to Thanksgiving was talking about this awesome party <sighs> that we are going to go to. For Thanksgiving, I forgot. About and this. we sort of like it gets lost in translation that the we means like him and the people that know the people and we're but invited to go to the party not and know not the people. us. Yeah. And once we realized that, it was like we have to find some we place have to, find to be, to do. some way to eat. So we're walking around Austin, and this was before like band tensions. I think simmered to it at a higher point at the end. Or they're, they're there, but. yeah. But I'm right. No, no, no. Absolutely. But I mean, at this point, though, we're still all talking to yeah, each other. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? Still, sure. We're like a team. From I mean, in yeah. I mean, it was, was a, a day later. What it was literally 180 degrees different. But Joseph at that t- at that time, at Joseph was driving. Yeah, yeah. Because this so, is this is at the end of the tour. Yeah, this was after like everything had gone on, all the stuff that we'll go back to probably at some point. But we're to, we we go there to Austin, and we're walking down the street. And we're walking towards a place that um, is a vegetarian restaurant that I know about that's right around the corner from the Scientology place. And so their Scientology office is directly across the street from the University of Texas campus um, and has this, like, chalkboard sign outside that's, like, um, free personality test. Is that what it said? Yeah, it's free personality test. And I think there were, like, cookies or crackers. Yeah, yeah. That was mine and Ian's reasoning. Yeah, it was like, like, oh, some free food. (laughs) Okay. And I mean, we knew, I mean, we don't know then what we know now about Scientology. But we knew it was bullshit. We knew it was bullshit and we knew it was fucked up, but we, uh, and we knew like, oh, this could get weird, but whatever. Like, we don't have anything else to do. So there was a time when like Scientology was not as. No, it wasn't as known how like fucked up and yeah, crazy. like the go- yeah. before like going clear like, and before younger, all that like, stuff. We knew. I, no, like, I mean it's we knew weird. it was a fucked up cult. We just didn't know what they did to people. Yeah, we or, didn't like, know about, how like, deep it went. Like, like I was always yeah. like, oh, this weird 
thing. And I'm like, right. I was raised Mormon, because, and that's weird too. So whatever. Yeah, I mean, there was because there was a moment right towards the end where it got a little tense, where they didn't want to let us leave, which we'll get to. But like, so I mean, I don't think I, I certainly going in didn't think that that would be a, something that happened. Like, no, I, I just, I mean, so we were able to leave, obviously. We just but, thought it was gonna be funny. Yeah, we were like, oh, this will be a, a laugh, whatever. Yeah, so we we went in and we took this like it was like an exam. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, no, they so, so they questions. split us all apart. Did they right? hold the little bars or not? No, 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 they no. Didn't. Yeah. That, no so they split like us a, all apart though. It was like, like one a, of their where, was it like a like a scantron? Yeah, it's like a scantron yeah. sheet. Yeah. Totally. One of the most important things, like you could tell, like the cultness of it, because they made sure once we got there that they started split splitting us up so that we weren't near each other. And then I also remember the coffee table books that were out. Like one of them was like the faces of Scientology, and it was like full like page glossy color pictures of celebrities that were Scientologists. And one of the other ones was like the horrors of psychology. Yeah. <laughs> and it was and it was like and it was like like seventeenth century like torture devices. But it was like you know a psychiatrist wants to put this on your face, you know, and you're like yeah no. So they brought us off into these things. I just remember for me where I was sitting. The kid who did my test, and I don't remember, did we all have the same person who did it? The kid that was like the guy from The Simpsons is like, Mr. Simpson. I think, yeah, I think we were all in a room together, but we were split up apart like you're taking the SATs yeah. or something. It was like this weird red-haired kid that had like a cracky voice and acne, and I was sitting under a poster for Sea Org, like the, they're wow. like, they're, so, they're like Scientology at Sea thing or whatever right. that had... Mm-hmm like a uh, picture of the ship and like some sort of like graph of like the organizational chart or whatever. I just remember looking at me like, what the fuck? So they go through and they ask us all these questions. Clearly we're all very different people and give totally different answers. And at the end, when we coll- collaborated after we left, they wouldn't let us take the papers with us. Right. Yeah. Well, Cause well, I am the only one who didn't meet with the guy because I got bored taking the test. Oh, and you were just like, fuck I was this. like, fuck this. And I just got up and left. Okay. And then, I went because there was like a video arcade. Of course he did, the, yeah. And I went and like played. Video. <laughs> I went, yeah, exactly. I quit. Of course, Justin's one that's like, yeah, whatever, fuck <laughs> this. I was like, fuck this. Yeah. I left, and then I met with you guys. You didn't and commit to the joke. Yeah, I didn't. but <laughs> I just couldn't. It was like too many questions. Was like, there's a lot yeah. of shit going on. But the thing that I remember being so insane about it is that you know you do all this thing, and then he gives you that he goes through it with you, and so he's looking at the sheet, and I just remember him saying like, you know. Well, I mean, the thing is, is that you're really not a very likable person and, you know, like just you can't make friends and, you know, and like, I mean, I can be a dick and clearly we were, Justin and I were pissed at each other at the time, but I mean, like, come on, like that was a little ridiculous. And it was like, you know, no one likes you. Like the bottom line was basically just like, you're unlovable. Your depression is driving away everyone that you love. Yeah. That was a big element. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And, but then it was like, but you know what? Don't worry because come with us and you'll be fine. And um, we have this big Thanksgiving thing that we're going to do. And they had young, like, college girls that worked there, clearly f- for the purpose of, like, trying to get people to be like, oh, I'll meet a girl, you know, whatever. And I remember when we were trying to leave, there was the main guy who was kind of like Wilford Brimley-ish. Yes. That kept asking us what our Thanksgiving plans were. And wh- and we didn't really know at the time, but we had to just kind of pretend that we did because it was like it got super weird. Oh, we're going to this awesome party with this guy named Harvey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever heard of him? It's great. Of course, to be fair, the which we will get to where we went was actually kind of hilarious and awesome too, but not as good as that party. But I do remember it getting weird and them trying to like stand between us and the door and like it was definitely like a, you know, they did not want to let uh, to let us leave. And we did, and then we all talked about it afterwards and realized they had told all of us who'd answered everything completely differently. They told all of us the exact same thing. So that, what you're saying you know, is you were this close to being captured and converted yeah. by Scientology. They're like, so this is a podcast. He's holding his fingers about three inches apart from That's each other, I think. Close. Yeah. Very close. Um, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, my life could have gone a really different way. Um, but no, I mean, that yeah, you was... You could be hobnobbing with Tom Cruise right now. Know, the agenda could have actually got famous. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> maybe that's what it would have taken. To the credit of Scientology, I do think we were all pretty depressed. <laughs> <laughs> like, they probably weren't wrong about that we were, part, okay. We were alone uh, yeah. on Thanksgiving and had yeah. been on tour for like two months at that point. Yeah, you know? yeah, that was a day, it was a dark time. And so... And you had just graduated in high school. And yeah, and you were like, this is my life. To and you were like pushing tape in the corner of a van, going, "What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. what did I do? sign up yeah. for?" <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so we had played at Emos, mm-hmm. and we met these two girls that like were away at college, but the one girl <laughs> lived in Austin, and so she brought her friend back home for Thanksgiving or whatever, and they invited us to go to this 
Thanksgiving luau. A Thanksgiving oh, luau. That's what it that's was. Right. And it was it, her dad was like a really liberal preacher. minister, preacher yeah, or whatever, yeah. right? And the, she was like, you know, there's going to be a prostitute there and her kid <laughs> and like a gay couple and like blah, blah, blah. She was like very insistent that we understand that this was not like a regular religious thing, you know? And I remember we drove out to this place. And it's funny now that I live in Forest Heights in Athens and there's like 15 deer in my yard every day. But I remember being really weirded out that I got out of the van at one point and walked into the, in this neighborhood and there were three deer that were like right next to me and didn't move. And I, I was mean, just I like, we were going to get Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It was like, a weird situation. It was not at all an old house or anything creepy like that. It was, you know, a little suburb, no, whatever. No, it was Texas. So but I it was, was a weird suspicious. situation. One of the things I remember most vividly about that was Ian not understanding what you do with a flaming shot and <laughs> dumping fire on his face. Um, <laughs> um, so that was pretty good. Fire his, I his mean, face. I think I think he like splashed. I think he likes put the fire to his face, and then it was like <laughs> like Whoa. like I don't oh, like. I want to say I want to say he dropped it yeah. because it was like ah, and then like it because I think there was fire on the counter. If yeah. I remember, it was like a marble counter, and I remember there being we started yeah, a fire. Yeah, yeah, there was a fire involved at some point. So anyway, that you know happened, and that show was or that that whole period was ridiculous. Then you know I think Justin disappeared for a while, and we couldn't figure out if we were going to leave without him. And so we, but then you turned up. We we never we were never actually going to leave because it wasn't time yet but we were like i hope he shows up before it's time to go yeah i think i just like basically went on a like walk and around. then we came back to the van and you were there and it was yeah, like because it, okay. it wasn't that party no i mean yeah. <laughs> it wasn't like that <laughs> so use miss dan anyway the, no no air quotations no. a that walk is, edit. <laughs> edit this is an edit point for bill um and we're back. Uh, so, so yeah, I mean, that, you know, there's whatever. There's no point in trying to be chronological about all of it. But, like, the shit was super weird. It was always weird with that band. Oh, yeah. Because, like, we were always just like, yeah, we're going to do this stuff. Like, I was at the height of my, like, being like, we can do anything we want to. Like, I'll just figure it out, right? And you guys were all willing to do it with me. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, here we go. And, uh, and like, like being in a cult more than like being in a band. I mean, it was, I was like a gang kind of, you yeah, know, it was yeah, like, yes. I mean, it was just like, yeah, whatever, man, we'll do it. We're in for it, you know. And I remember at, you know, Dan had met somebody from England that, ran a label and I don't think Ian was the person I think it was somebody else I think it was one of the other guys it was Ian but so anyway we sent our record over to this to this guy in England Ian Johnson who had signed the darkness to um his little his indie and he label had discovered the hives too yeah that's right so he, that's cause he, he worked had, for creation as yeah. a as a he had signed the hives person and then he had signed the darkness so yes. he was like and the darkness was on his indie label yeah. and then then they his indie label sold the darkness yeah to so he Atlantic was like feeling it he was like i'm two for two yeah yeah so i'm gonna, <laughs> sign, the golden this, touch. I'm gonna sign this band from America and he loved us and he loved us and, and we loved him and that guy is a fucking so, sane among men oh yeah I mean he put up with so much bullshit from us and was just fantastic to the end fucking love that guy he's still to this day is a tour manager for a band called Enter Shikari that plays all over the world and apparently no one's heard of him here but like in Asia and shit they play for like thousands of people um, tens of thousands of people yeah, so inter- intermittently through all this, like I gave up on my dream of playing music, went back, got my first like corporate job at the newspaper at the Athens Banner Herald, like was totally miserable. Then at some point, this idea that we were going to go to England came up because basically it was like, oh, you like our band? Well, how about you bring us to England? Because apparently I didn't think then I just said things like apparently I didn't think like, well, that's a ridiculous thing to ask him for. So I just did it. And he was like, yeah, OK, let's see if we can do that. It was like, wait, what? And so I remember I was at my job at the newspaper in my cubicle, like negotiating this potential European tour while trying to like design ads for like these shitty local businesses and like being in this weird personal hell. Did you name some of those shitty local businesses? Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, you know what? I'm not going to do that. That would be shitty. I mean, I could, but there's no point like that's Yeah. That's just like hitting a kid. There's no reason to do that. Um, but so so we wound up, he was like, yeah, like we'll we'll bring you to England to come play. And it was supposed to just be this one tour that we were going to go do. And we went over there. They flew us over there. You know, this was like, to us, it was like, holy shit, they bought our plane tickets. They flew us over, you know, and we had a tour manager. Of course, all of these things, when you say them, sound like, oh man, this was super fancy. But like in reality, like, it was, you know, we were sleeping. Dan slept in 
I, I think mean, that's a story I could yeah, tell. Yeah, Dan's got to get on the microphone for that story. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, we get to England, and oh, also, this was in 2003 yeah. uh, in the run up to the Iraq War. And so we got to London right after there had been like this million plus people march, right? Something that like was, that. Yeah. That was like a protest against Bush, and everyone was pissed at America. And so everyone was like, what the fuck? And we were like, yeah, we hate him too. Like, yeah, absolutely. We're, and I think we went over in May, and it was, I think, because Matt and my birthdays are are next to each other. And I think we left on Matt's birthday and played our first show on my birthday. Mm -hmm. um, and it was with the Mooney Suzuki, right? Yes. We yes. were. Wow. Which was we, <laughs> hilarious. Well, yeah, okay. really? The feelings mutual. So we, uh, Which so, is funny, because I used to go see the Mooney Suzuki when I lived in New York all the time and actually really liked them. Yeah, and then they got yeah. terrible and turned into total fucking assholes. But so anyway, Justin, go ahead. So yeah, we, yeah, we left Athens. We were jet lagged as fuck. Yes. We didn't go to sleep because we, you know, we arrived in London and it was daytime. Yeah. Even though it was like, should have been night, for, been night, night for, for us. Should have been night for us. Yeah, yeah. And, um, so we were, but we had a show that night. Yeah. On but borrowed then, equipment and yeah. stuff. We brought our so guitars and we keyboard. We just stayed, we just started drinking. Yeah. And like, maybe doing drugs. I don't remember. And, uh, we played that show that night with Mooney Suzuki and yeah. I was like, I was out of my mind because I hadn't slept. Yeah. And oh, I, that show was crazy, and it was sold out. It was totally packed. Totally packed. And um, do you remember that the Mooney Suzuki had those big foam fingers? Oh, yeah. yeah. And I, <laughs> so Did you I, take one of them or something? I took one, and I stuck it in my <laughs> pants so that it was sticking out like my dick. <laughs> yeah, out through the zipper. Yeah. Yeah. So I also remember that before the show, after sound check, but before the show, we were getting fish and chips at like a pub because we were like, oh, we're in England, let's get fish and chips, right? And then we were like, oh my God, this is the only thing we can eat here because the food here is fucking horrible. But um, remember pizza in England? Oh my God, it shouldn't be allowed to be called pizza. I just ate KFC the whole time. <laughs> yeah, you did, that's right. <laughs> All I did was I ate pizza. scrambled egg sandwiches from this place that was right near where we stayed. But uh, so anyway, we so we're at, uh, somebody and I were at this table eating fish and chips and we overheard this guy this like old British guy who was clearly like an old roadie guy. Like he'd been a roadie for people forever. Were you, was it you, Matt? You, so he you was the old roadie. That <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he, I just, for some reason I vividly remember there being peas in front of me while all of this happened. I think cause I was just like, these peas, peas are, these peas are, no, they were really green. Like yeah. I was like, wow, oh, they're delicious are, peas. Yeah, yeah. They were really good. Like surprisingly. So considering everything there tastes like garbage, but um, I disagree this, with all of this, these statements. This so. guy, <laughs> this guy is talking shit next to us, though. This like old ready guy about about these people just from America just being total fucking assholes, like bossing him around, just being like fucking horrible people. And it turns out it's the Mooney Suzuki that he's talking about, and he's like been assigned to be their like guitar guy, and their guitarist has been just a total turd to him, right? And so, and we were already like, whatever, we, we, we were on top of the world. It was my birthday. We were playing our first tour in England. And at this point we were on the radio in England too. Like the single was on Christ. being played on the BBC. Like our album had been released there. We had like end caps at like tower records and shit. I mean, it was like, there was real things happening there, you know? Um, and so I remember after the show, there were some girls that were hanging around and Matt, you tell this, do you remember this? Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> Well, one of them goes to uh, to talk to what it was the guitarist, right? I think oh. it was the singer, but I okay. might be wrong. Yeah, and uh, and they they just did go to get his attention, and he like very quickly like and shuts him down. Yeah, like yeah. like, like not, you're not getting any autographs yeah. out of me. And uh, and he says we'll be downstairs signing autographs soon. Just, yeah, we need some time or something like that, right? Yeah, and, and then. And then what, they're they're just looking for the bathroom, yeah. right? Yeah, they, they the have girls no were idea looking for the bathroom. Is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing was is that I don't think he real like I just remember him looking up and seeing us looking at him when that happened and him just being like rear, 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 yeah. rear. it's like it was like this other band that I mean like if we're being honest totally smoked them on stage like we played a great show and like we were at the top of our oh, powers no, we, during we that kicked, point we kicked their ass yeah yeah um, so and and in the midst of all this we'll tell all these England stories together because but I will just say that in the midst of that first tour, we went on uh, – in the very beginning, we went on air in the BBC. Justin and I were interviewed 
on the BBC, and we went yeah, we into... Yeah, did somebody's show. It was... Was uh, it the Steve Lamack show? Yes, that was yeah. it. Yeah, we and we went up, it. like, into the BBC Tower, and, like, it was like, wow, this is fucking crazy. And we had... I remember we had the, the name tags, and it was like, you must return this, and I just stole mine, and yeah, it's on my too. wall to this day. <laughs> um, but <laughs> I still look at it, and I'm like, yep, I did that. That's something I did. Um, but so we did that, and, like, and I just remember... we did a session for XFM Radio. Yes, yeah, yeah, where we had to play without amps. It was really bizarre. Yeah, where Like, these, through pop... Yeah. Um, uh, line six amps or whatever those yeah. like pedals yeah it was really weird but it was great but it sounded great yeah they were like basically we were like no nah, we're not doing this and they were like everyone does it trust us everyone and we were just so like went straight to the board or something yeah it was like through it yeah um you like amp emulators yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, I remember being like, I'm not cool with this, but then it was fine, whatever. Um, but so at some point during that tour, things had been going well. And so I said to Ian, I looked in the paper that we were looking in the papers all the time and that that summer the Reading and Leeds festivals were coming. And I was like, you need to get us on the bill for the Reading and Leeds festivals. And he was like, yeah, okay, whatever. And I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not kidding. You need to try to do that. And he's like, well, that would be awesome. Yeah, let me see if I could do that. So I remember him calling us when we were um, – somehow talking to him. I don't think he was with us, whatever. Anyway. And it was basically like, Holy shit, they went for it. So at that point we knew we were going to come back for another tour at the end of this and during the summer and do those shows. So I don't know chronologically where all this shit happens, but while we're in England, <laughs> this is so jumbled right while now. we're in England, while we're in England, all this garbage happens. And, uh, one of the things that happened was playing in Wales by a castle and we were really excited because we were playing with the locust. Yeah. But we didn't know for sure if it was the locust that we knew of from San Diego or if it was some local band named the locust. And I feel like we were like pretty excited to see them and they were like not super friendly. No, they were cool. Were they? Yeah. Because all right. They're... One of them was rude. I remember maybe. I don't yeah, know. Whatever. I, I remember them being cool because we, uh, we were in the ba- we were in the dressing room and all their like bug costumes. Yeah, because they, they weren't there, and we were talking about wouldn't it be funny, funny if they if came we back and we were wearing, wearing their bug their costumes? <laughs> <laughs> Which first of all, those dudes were like two pounds each, and there's yeah, no we, way we would have fit in their bug costumes. I would have fit, but, that's but yeah, it. but also I that just remember <laughs> I remember when yeah, you know. you were, <laughs> well, I remember when those guys came back though thinking yeah they wouldn't have thought that no, was funny they have known. like they were super i think that's what i was thinking about them being dicks was like because we were we we were like oh it is the real locust look there are their bug costumes and they were like having dinner and we were like let's put on their bug costumes and when they come back we'll be wearing them and then and they were like when they came back we were like oh i'm really glad we didn't do that they would not have been into that at all they would not have thought that was super funny. serious dude oh yeah then in fact they had had all of their equipment shipped on a container ship from america like a month before their tour so they could use their speaker cap cabinets yeah oh i was God. like what is wrong with you like just borrow some speaker cabinets you uh, know but anyway um that was really <laughs> that was really funny uh dan though while we were there we all had to stay in different places why don't you guys all tell where you stayed and then i'll talk about where i stayed well so <laughs> well you know we we all stayed in in pretty nice places you yeah know, we all justin got, had a pretty good place to yeah. stay D- matt and i claimed our Ian, our label guy's living room, which I mean, at the time we didn't see where damn, and we were like, oh, this is kind of small and it's not super comfortable. Whatever, it was great. It was the fucking Ritz Carlton for where Dan had to stay. It was a very nice apartment because yeah. oh no no no, absolutely oh, yeah. it was. Yeah, we were just on some weird broken ass like futon in the living room or whatever. <laughs> but so we had this driver though, um, and earlier we were trying to figure it out, kind of you know whatever. Basically, we had this driver from Wales. His name was Ryan. We called him Welsh Ryan, and we could not understand him for the first week he was our driver. Like, I remember the first time that we got in the van with him, he drove us out onto the highway in England and he's, we're in the back of this Welsh ambulance and he's leaning back trying to talk to us. Nobody has seatbelts on. He doesn't, you know, and he's rolling a spliff. So he's emptying a cigarette, getting the tobacco out of the cigarette, taking, getting weed out, getting the paper out, doing all this stuff while he's driving, while he's driving down the highway, not a straight highway. It's there's turns. And he's leaning back, talking to us over his shoulder, j- steering with his knee. And we had like, j- you know, we were all just like, what the fuck is happening? And we could not understand a word he said. And I remember at a certain point, I think we actually said to each other, like, so we're just going to go with it. Right. Like, cause I remember we kept looking at each other, like, do you understand do you understand? And like, I was like, no, we don't understand. And then uh, miraculously a week into it, all of a sudden, suddenly we understood him. Yeah, Like it was amazing. Like suddenly, and then we stayed at his parents' house and it was great. And like, he was was such a cool guy. The guy was fucking amazing. Yeah. It was seriously. Yes. Cardiff, Wales is like the Shire. Yeah. He was always like deck denim and denim with like a giant, was it Thin Lizzy or Iron Maiden? Thin Lizzy. Thin Thin Lizzy Lizzy on his back. And then we had Stoddy 
to the other guy who was the guy who was my guitar tech for the Reading Festival oh, in Leeds, yeah. you know, who was also fucking hilarious. But um, but so yeah, so so Dan, so Ryan, Ryan says this to guy's you, fine. Right? okay, so. Um, first of all, Ryan, one thing I remember about him is he was obsessed with the Sleepy Jackson. Remember, like he had, his friend had been driving for the Sleepy Jackson oh. and they were just hitting an all, and I kind of liked the Sleepy Jackson. I don't even remember who and that is. And he only talked to yeah. me about Sleepy Jackson. They became Empire of the Sun. Like that's, like okay, it was the okay, predecessor okay, to Empire okay. of the Sun, who's the one movie? of my favorite bands now. So there you go. Empire of the Sun, the movie? No, no, no the no, band. Oh, there's a band. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're awesome. <laughs> anyway, um, Ryan and I never really agreed on music that much. So. I, I also have no idea what's happening. Uh, anyway, so... So uh, they need one person to go home with Ryan. Um, I don't, and it ended up to be carrying in the gear because where he lived was so sketchy. We had to carry, which in the we did gear not know. Day. To be fair, and no so one knew that was going to happen. But those of you, you can't totally see me, got stuck. I'm Matt and I were about the same size back then, but we were pushing a hundred pounds. Yeah, very slight. <laughs> yeah, he's a little fella. Um, and so, and and Ryan was big. Let, let's. He was a big dude. Yeah. And, and I, before I go into this, Ryan was awesome. Oh, I, amazing. My time with Ryan was great. I got to know him very well. As you'll find out, I slept with him several nights. <laughs> So we were good friends. But anyway, so every night we would drive an hour and a half out of London. So we would come back to London after every show. And you guys. Because you had to drop all of us off. We, yeah, no, I mean, we like, were all staying like we in London. We would drive out in England and then come back to London. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We rarely yeah, stayed yeah. at a hotel. That's because the drives were so short, remember? So, so they would all go stay at the Four Seasons or wherever they were staying. <laughs> and I would get in this van with, with Ryan, and I would drive an hour and a half out of town to a building that they were squatting. So it was a bunch of punk kids that were squatting an entire high-rise building. It was like 15 <laughs> stories. It looked like post-apocalyptic London is what it looked like. I mean, it was oh, like God. the skeleton of a building. Um, and, Children of men. And so the first night, like we had been driving all day. We got there at like three in the morning. We had to be, we had to leave to pick you guys up at seven. So oh, you it was guys, absurd. Yeah, so yeah, we yeah, could like... get you guys at 10. You guys, you know, you could go eat like brunch with the, the darkness or whatever you're doing. <laughs> So anyway, so we get there, it's raining. He's like, and he didn't tell me we had to bring in the gear. He's like, well, you know, it's really sketchy here. We need to bring in the gear. And these amps, like we had like Marshall stacks or something. Not, as as, I mean, we had big amps, but they, they, were weren't, amps. they weren't Marshall stacks. I, don't, were, yeah. I didn't carry an amp because yeah. I was playing keyboard direct most of the time. And here I am carrying amps and drums in to six floors without an elevator <laughs> in this squat. So we get all that up there. And, and then, then it's and, like seven o'clock in the morning. You got to. Well, no, 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 no. He's not even started so, yet. So. We're, we're loading into this, like, room that is about, it's about the size of this room, so like 15 by 20, maybe. There's a giant king bed in the middle of the room, and we're squeezing all the amps up against the wall. And I'm like, oh, so where am I sleeping? He's like, oh, this is my apartment. Like that room. So that room was his apartment. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And he's like, oh, we'll just sleep here. So he luckily had a king bed. So, uh, and you're the a king, little guy, like yeah, you said. I get in the king yeah. bed with him, and he pulls out a plastic two liter of Strongbow cider. <laughs> And he screws off the cap and takes a swig, turns on the TV, and hands it to me. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, when in, oh, when in London. So yeah. I just, I'm like, if I'm going to sleep, I'm going to have to drink this whole bottle of yeah. Strongbow. <laughs> so I chug the Strongbow, and then he falls asleep before me, and, of course, he snores. Love you, Ryan, of but he's snoring yeah. horribly. And, just like um, this Ryan does. And so he's snoring. I'm in this bed with him. And, I mean, it's punk. It's like, you know, like, this is like. Roots. You're in your scene points then. Yeah, yeah, for real. Like, this is. <laughs> So then I wake up and I hadn't showered in three days. And he's like, oh, we got a shower. You can take a shower here. So yes. this is the best part. So yes. My go favorite. to the shower and the shower is a line of shower stalls that go from the bottom floor to the top floor. They're all lined up. On it's top like an elevator. Shower. Communal showers for like these apartments. I don't know what this was before because they were just squatting it again. But I mean, it, it could have been an elevator shaft. It could have been anything. It was just they had the water running down. It, no, because right? there were shower heads. Okay. Oh, okay. There, there were, were shower heads at each point. But, so, but there was not a floor. So there weren't floors. There were two by four that you would stand on, right? So you go in there and you turn on and the not water. not a floor's worth of two-by-fours, just a couple, right? Well, I mean, there were, you know, I, yeah, yeah, okay, that sounds good. Yeah, yeah. there were just two two-by-fours there. <laughs> <laughs> You're so, the version of the story you told us at the time is really good. Let's stick with that. Okay, so that uh, my memory is that it was two, because I'm, you're straddling, I'm standing up now. You're straddling two two by fours and you're showering and the water's like. Coming have you out this have little... you ever done anything with a microphone before? I'm talking into it <laughs> from three feet away. <laughs> Sit down. Anyway, you can hear. Him. So, um, so anyway, you turn on the shower, you, you, the water's going on you, and then it just falls down this pit to the bottom of the building into the basement. No one knows where it goes. I go, I'm an engineer, so I said, "Oh, where does this water go?" He's like, "I don't know." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, you mean it's supposed, supposed to go you somewhere? So that's the, the thing. If somebody yeah. if somebody decides to take a shower on the floor above you, you get the fuck out of the shower. Got, your shower's all over. Is gonna come yeah. down on you. <laughs> so you're looking up at people's balls. Well, like no. So the minute you see a foot come into that shower, you're like, you're oh, like, my oh, shower's oh. over. <laughs> so like I got out of there with soap on me, and I'm like, all right, I guess I'm done. Let's go. <laughs> Carrying the amps, putting them back in the car, driving two hours back to London, <laughs> going to the Ritz Carlton, picking so, them up. How did you not after the first night go to one of these guys and be like? All right, I did my night. It's your turn to do it. I don't know, guys. How come that didn't happen? I will say that that very quickly, Matt and I were like, we're staying at Ian's. Yeah, no, they like were total dicks about it. Yeah, (laughs) I mean, I will say like I was I was the worst I've ever been as a person when I was in the agenda. Like I would never do. I would never just be like, yeah, fuck you, man. Like I would never do that now. I would have. I have a bit. Here's my most vivid memory of tour because I filed this away. It was like right at the end, (laughs) things were falling apart that you'll hear about in the future. And I was in the van and I was like, I had like was telling myself almost out loud, like, but like saying it with my inner voice, just remember how shitty this is. When you get home, you're going to think back and think, oh my God, that was uh-huh. awesome. Yeah. Like, this is what I want to do with my life. We went to England. We <laughs> were like awesome. in the enemy. It was so great. Just think of this moment right now and how much your life sucked. <laughs> it's never been this bad before. It will never be this bad again. <laughs> and that's the one memory I have from England. Although to be fair, I think you got in some weird Iron the World Trade Center situations that hopefully we'll get to in a podcast that may have rivaled some of those things. Yeah, but maybe nothing not. really rivaled Nothing that. really that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, um, but so in England... But you look back on it fondly now. Oh, no. It was character building. Yeah. For yeah. Sure, yeah, I mean, and and like you said too, I hadn't mentioned the enemy. Like you know, before we went to England, they flew a photographer to Atlanta to take pictures of us for like a foot. You know, like we were. It it was a time when the kind of music that we were playing, like the Hives, had gotten big, the White Stripes had gotten big, like Kings of Leon were getting big, like all those. There it was a uh, Jet was coming out yeah, right Jet, at that yeah. time. Jet was really big at the, the time. Dotsons. Yeah, the Dotsons. Dotsons. Yeah, it was just like every the band in the yeah, world. Yeah, and 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 it was working for us. Like oh. everyone. Didn't work for yeah. the cadets. In a, in a Cracker Barrel uh, in Michigan, oh, yeah. we were mistaken for the Strokes. <laughs> yeah, while I was while I was throwing up in the bathroom, I overheard someone say the Strokes are were in the crack. Somebody's like, "Dude, the Strokes are here!" As I'm puking in the bathroom, realizing that he's and talking you're like, about Shit, the rest. The strokes are here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I ran out, wiped my face off, and I was like, "Oh, it's just you guys." Yeah, no, no. Some um, assholes are wearing the Strokes clothing. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. Um, they're bug costumes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the Strokes bug costumes. So uh, so also in England, though, getting up to the Reading and Leeds Festival stuff, um, Matt, do you remember the, the story about Bobby, the guy from the sites? Oh, yeah. So Bobby was, was before, great. So, like, right before we get to that, we um, – I uh, – we we were going to it's okay. So Dan's trying to casually go to the bathroom right now, but <laughs> there's no way to do it casually. Dan's going to the bathroom right now. Uh, um, are we back on? We are back on rolling. Okay. Cool. Um, so we were right at going to the Reading and Leeds festivals. Yeah. Because right before we went to those festivals, I don't remember which day it was because they were on a weekend. It was you played one on Saturday and then the next on the next on the Sunday, yeah. and you played with this, all the bands that played with you that one day played the same the next day. So we didn't get to see any different people. But so the first day, that's right. The first day was when we decided to go crazy because the second day we saw the sights and they were like, "What? We don't know what you're talking about." They totally forgot everything that happened. So we got there and Ian and I had decided we were going to say yes to everything. We were going to just say yes to to everything, right? And we had been drinking, like, warm beer this whole time. Like, hadn't – we were normally liquor drinkers, and there was no place to buy liquor. There was um, – own, hash was the only thing anybody had. There was no grass, weed anywhere. Like, it was just, you know, whatever. So we get there, and I guess right after we play, somebody gives Ian and I this bottle of rum that has a sailor hat on it, like, and, <laughs> and we wound up drinking it all. So like, we, cause we were just like, we're going to say yes to everything. And then somebody gave us a joint and we were like, okay, cool. So we smoked a joint and then somebody gave us ecstasy, which we had never had any interest in doing. And I was like, fine, I'll take a half a pill. So we broke it in half and we were like, okay, fine. Cause we're just going to say yes to everything. And after that, like, I don't fucking know. I know, <laughs> I know at one point in the, in the middle of the night, 
could have been, I guess, I don't know, whatever. It was dark, and I was in the like techno tent, and I was like, "What is happening? Why am I you here?" Got like I was real standing, close. Like I walked, I walked right in the back. No, I was by myself. <laughs> I walked right in the back door. At this point, we'd like split up and everything, and I think Beck was playing outside. Yeah, he was and, playing the main stage, and he was playing like quiet shit, right? And I walked in, or at least when this happened, he was, and I'm, and so I walked into this tent where the techno thing was happening and i'm not interested in techno like uh, remotely and i just but remember being like ecstasy. yeah i remember yeah. I, I didn't so dance i didn't knew. talk to anybody i sat with my back against the back you of the tent <laughs> and i just sat there with all the lights going on and i was just like what is happening and then you and think, so and then you learned yeah and so at some point we you know ian and i had split up and ian was with you then right i think so yeah and you guys i met. would love if, if the story went where you came out of the techno tent like Huge techno guy. With like the I was so into it. Yeah. 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 I was wearing Jinkos. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I just remember that being really weird, whatever. Um, I mean, there wasn't much more crazy to that, except that, like, I missed this insane situation that happened while I was gone. With, with which Bobby. was Which was Matt and Ian. Go, did, were you there, too? No. This? Matt I was and, by myself. I was by myself, too. Matt and Ian went to... Uh, get lunch and the weird thing about the place that they had to get lunch there was it was like very much like old school England it was like these old ladies that were like lunch ladies mm-hmm. that had these like long tables with this white tablecloths yeah. this is the backstage this of the was festival. the like VIP so all the area. bands ate together except for the headlining bands so like Beck and, and Blur. Blur had their had food on their tour bus I remember yeah, they the, weren't there the headlining bands or so like the way that the festival set up there's sort of like a a fenced in area that goes all the way around that you can only get into yes, if you've got passes. Yeah, yeah. So like if you're playing like we played the very front stage and then there's like a middle stage that like the Mars Volta, the Rapture. Is that where Turbo Negro played too? I think so. Yeah. Oh no, there was a punk stage. Oh that's right. They there were was on a punk the rock stage, tour where, stage or whatever. Yeah, where <laughs> AM, cause it was like AFI, Turbo Negro. <laughs> Bowling for soup. Yeah. Was and then there was the like story. A, there was like an indie rock big stage that's where like the mars volta and yeah. rapture were playing and that's then right. there was the techno thing and then there was the main stage where it was beck what Black, stage did you guys play on we played on the, the like the, the new like, rock and, stage it was or like whatever. the up and coming stage it was like us and um i think the world sites. heat and the sites oh, and world with heat yeah great band billy yeah. bragg played one yeah. of the nights yeah he did he was yeah. like hey headline what happened to world with heat I don't know. Same thing that happened to the agenda. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere they're recording a, a podcast right yeah. now. Where would he play at my this. record store? Really? Yeah. We um, played with them twice because we played with them in Portland once too. Yeah, they were fun. I mean, they were cool. We liked them. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, so, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, you were saying. Oh, no. The and then, stage. like, so the headliners, yeah, it was like Black Rebel Motorcycle Club, Blur, The Libertines. The Libertines, but, but without, it, but without Pete Doherty yeah. because he had been arrested for crack. Right, like right then. Yeah, yeah that like was when like when we were in England, he had just been arrested, and they he had to was get in the tabloids. Then, yeah. Um. Then, so Back but, Blur. yeah, Blur. Yeah. And then there was another band that I saw that I Junior loved Senior Black Girl Motorcycle Club. No, it was the band I loved at the time. They're almost like shoegazy. Junior. Well, there was that Junior Senior band no, that no, you no, really yeah. liked. They were the, shoegazy. The, I don't know. No, they were like dancey. Black like, but Angels that's, to Kill. No, no. You know up. what? Totally yeah. doesn't matter. Not, doesn't matter. This what? isn't the story. A, I have a story about that. Oh, okay. Well, well, let's. So Matt so, goes to go. Oh, guard, yeah, oh sorry. yeah. No. So so yeah. Like so. That's the setup. Is like there's these, and there's like these there's different stages. Of food. And there's yeah. But then there's like the VIP, the headliner headliners yeah. got their own trailers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beca- and Harmar was at. He had his. He, he had a there. DJ party happening, yeah, which I want to get to. DJ too. party. So I was hanging out with him while you guys yeah. were doing your thing. And so, me and him were like, we were hanging out and I, I was like drinking beer and I, I was out of like beer and he goes, Psh, just go into one of those band headliners uh, <laughs> trailers and get some beer. And I was like, are you serious? And he was like, oh yeah, sure. And so I went into Black Rebel Motorcycle Club because they were on stage playing <laughs> and I stole all their fucking beer. All of it? <laughs> all of it. And I brought it out and Harmon was like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so during this whole time matt and ian and, went and to go ian, get lunch yeah we're we're at like that craft services tent with the big long you know family style tables yeah and um we see bobby from the sites who was at we should mention was 19 and had never left the state of michigan before going on tour to England. yeah and like we had played like one show with them in in england 
No, we no we played, no, we played them in America, but yeah, he yeah, wasn't yeah. in the band. He then. wasn't in the band then, and then we played with them again in England. Oh, that's right. uh, with him, uh, and so we we you know we like met him in London, and then mm. you know he was super excited. He was no, like this wide eyed dude. The Detroit airport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were on our flight. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And then we're like, oh, we're playing together. Yeah. So so we see this guy and. It's great for me because like I'm I'm also 19 and there's somebody here who's like more overwhelmed than I am. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you'd already been on tour so, all over the place. Um, and yeah, we see him sort of saunter into the craft services tent and he looks like the ending of 2001 Space Odyssey. Like he has seen it all. <laughs> and he's tripping at this point. That's what we thought. We thought that he was tripping balls on like acid yeah. or ecstasy or Did it turn whatever. out that wasn't true? He was just very, very high. Okay. And, and really right. making a okay. go of it. He was okay. really he was really having a good time. Yeah. Um we you know, there were some the- decorative uh like fruits in the middle of these <laughs> big, you know, displays of food that they had. And so he just goes for the gold. He grabs a pineapple. A <laughs> Which complete, was these were not for eating. Yeah, yeah, just for just 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 to look at. And they were it, like this gigantic whole pineapple. <laughs> and there is no cutlery except for just like plasticware. Wasn't there a big serrated <laughs> bread knife? I thought. Was you know, it? it was a serrated plastic. Oh, a plastic knife. Knife. It was it was a serrated plastic <laughs> knife, and he was just he's got it on this paper plate, and he's just working <laughs> at it. To cut, cut slices of this <laughs> and, pineapple out, and and and, and 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 he's got these big glassy eyes, and he's it's like he has it looks like he hasn't eaten in weeks, and he's just so happy to have this, and he's cutting it apart. There's just like pineapple juice and pulp going everywhere. <laughs> Like, These giant half pint like yeah. slices, full diameter yeah, slices. Yeah, yeah. Of, yeah, like weird like isosceles like triangles size. of pineapple. Yeah. And uh this is just his hands and his sleeves of his shirt are just covered in pineapple. And you know, so he's just and he's just he's like, Oh man, taste the pineapple. He's just man. shoveling it in his mouth. <laughs> like, Check out loving this pineapple, it. And he's, man. he's offering it to us and we're like, No, we're okay, man. He's like, gotta um, have the pineapple. And he goes over to was it was it bowling, bowling for, for soup. soups table yeah. and Which just is like this morbidly obese bald guy, right? Yeah, and, then, and like, they were doing you know guys. like uh, radio friendly ska punk. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Sort of like its last gasp at the time. Thing. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. And he just plops this <laughs> <laughs> just destroyed pineapple in the middle of their table and walks away. It's like here, guys, have some pineapple, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, Great. Yeah, I wonder what that guy's that up was to really good. today. And then the but the best thing though is that the next day, so we all we could talk about was how fucked up that guy was, how hilarious mm-hmm. it was, blah 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 blah. And so the next day we show up to the play the next festival with them too, and all we're like, oh man, I can't wait to like make fun of him about blah blah. He didn't remember any of it. He had no at all, nothing. Like he was no just like, I don't know what you're talking about. And we were like. This is the worst thing that could have happened. We can't even make fun of you about it. Like, he was just like, I don't know. What do you mean? Um, so that was, yeah, that was good. Also, at that thing, this is goes to the to Ian and why, uh, Ian, our label guy, Ian Johnson, and, and Ian Cohn, and why. Yeah, this um, is the tale of two Ians. Yeah, this is really just, just so, and I think I talked about this maybe on the episode where we had Sam from Interpol on, because they may have been there, but I don't remember. I they, they weren't playing. So anyway, Justin will probably correct me on who was actually in the room. But we went into this room where Harmar was DJing backstage. Yeah, and Jack and Osborne was there. Yes, it was Jack Osborne was DJing with Harmar because yeah. there was some connection. They were buddies. They were buddies at that time. And um, and then there were these girls who were paid – to dance like they weren't they weren't strippers but like they were not they were not fans that were there but they they were they were like wearing you know like like booty shorts and whatever and like they were supposed to like dance they were whoever the sponsor of the room was they you know probably carling yeah yeah so so like they were there to like dance around and there was nobody dancing except for them and ian who i'll get to in a second but watching all of this around the room just in various the pockets cool bands. every fucking cool band that was there like the mars volta like with the hair i was like oh there's the hair the yeah yeah yeahs i think were there or nick zinner was there one somebody yeah. you know because they weren't playing but there was you know and so it was just uh, like, meg white was there because the yeah. white stripes were supposed to play that's right but she broke her arm that's right but she was dating the guy from the soledad brothers yep and they played on our stage yeah. too mm-hmm. and so she was there with the cast on yeah so so, so all like the coolest bands at the moment are like standing around in their little fucking clicky circles, looking into the center of this room like this is bullshit. And in the middle is, were you dancing too? 
I think me and Ian, yeah. You and Ian were dancing. And Ian, who we've mentioned before, had a penchant for becoming Cornholio at the most inopportune times, decided in the midst of this with these like booty dancing girls and every fucking cool person in the world at the moment watching us, Ian pulls his shirt up over his head and starts dancing around the room with his arms up like Cornholio. Just straight <laughs> like, for the Cornholio. Like just straight Again. up doing a Cornholio impression in the midst of all of this stuff. And all the other bands are like looking at him like, who the fuck is this idiot? See, and so if I'd have been one of those so, bands, I'd be like, fuck yeah. But no, okay, so here's, so I'm standing with Ian, our label guy, who at that point it was like, clear that like you know like we were doing well but like we weren't gonna we weren't gonna be the band that broke out probably like he had spent a lot of money to get us there twice like you know like this deal wasn't you know whatever like this one wasn't gonna be the one that paid off for him and i i was like and we started laughing and he like put his arm around me and he's like man this is makes everything all worthwhile he's like i don't care just watching everybody in this room watch ian be an idiot out of himself and have so much fun he's like fuck all these people in this room this is amazing and it was it was like this beautiful moment where i was just like yeah that's the agenda in a nutshell because like don't give a fuck like just whatever um so yeah so the cornholio at the dance party was did you remember what band it was it was the doves Oh. Uh, yeah, so and I'll tell this story quickly. So this is actually so that the worst you heard my worst moment in the tour bus when I was like this sucks. So this is my best moment. Um so the doves were playing and I had to actually look up the name of their song that was okay, yeah. So um <laughs> so anyway, they're playing and it was I don't know if you guys remember it was cloudy all day, it was kinda of rainy, it was just like a great Yeah, you mean it was Eng- we were in England. Yeah, it was like a great yeah. British day, right? Yeah. And so um they're playing and they did this song called what is it called again? I just looked it doesn't it up. matter. Catch the sun. Well, it's very okay. it's very oh, important. Oh, it doesn't matter. Okay. So, um, and I st- I stood on the main stage all day. I watched back and BRMC all from backstage on the main stage. They yeah. like you sit there. You could go anywhere you wanted if you had that pass. I'm like I'm gonna go sit by all the big yeah. bands and you know watch the eighty five thousand people that are in the audience clap. And Didn't like, you and somebody it. go stand out in front of Beck's microphone for a minute and then they were like get back here? Like, well, they pulled you went- me, they pulled me back. Yeah, you were yeah. Getting too close to them or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but like I was able to sit there all day and just watch the i mean it was sixty thousand people or yeah, whatever. yeah like, watch, i just wanted to see what that was like to be on stage in front of that yeah. many people so i got to do that and so doves are playing catch the sun and he, they're playing and it's this real beautiful song and i really liked it at the time it's probably still a good song and all of a sudden he goes i don't want to have you turn your back on me right now but everybody needs to turn around right now and it was literally this beam of sun was shining down in the middle of 60,000 people while he's singing Catch the Sun. And it was just like this epic, like, okay, this is why we're doing this. Maybe it's not yeah. as bad as I thought it was on the tour bus. See, it wasn't. So that was a beautiful moment. You know what my moment of that was? was Who was the guy? <laughs> Justin and I saw the guy from the Mars Volta being tailed by... The dude from AFI. The dude from AFI holding a black lace umbrella to to shield himself from the harsh British sun um, as he like tried to like run to catch up to the guy from the Mars Volta who was clearly trying to ignore him. And he went, didn't he slip like on this hill? I feel like there was this hill and he like, I don't know, whatever. The guy just looked, I, yeah, that was yeah. a beautiful moment too. That was really fun. Um, so yeah, I mean, and there's a lot more things to get to and maybe we will do this and record it in two parts. That might wind up being the best way to do it. But um I do you want to try do we have enough that we should wait and do that stuff or do you want to try and bust out some stuff should we finish England what else is there to name? I mean there's well, a lot I mean, you know. we did talk about Tarmar getting off the van getting out of the tour bus with Primal Scream and the two ladies oh I didn't remember that don't you remember that uh uh-uh. so- we had to play very early. I don't think you guys mentioned that. Oh, no. Yeah, we played when they opened the gates. So, so like, as soon as they opened the gates, driving, we started playing. We're driving yeah. in and setting up at, you know, the crack of dawn. Um, and so a van pulls up, and it's Primal Scream's van. And we didn't know that. Though. Like, a tour bus pulls up. And we're like, wow, who's that? It's a really cool bus. And our friend there is Harm, our superstar. Like, he's always showing up everywhere we are. Yeah. And so we're standing in front of this bus, and all of a sudden the door flies open, Harmar Superstar is standing there in his his you know speedo underwear, um, you know, scratching his belly, and he kind of just rolls out of the van. Do you remember this? He just yeah. kind of rolls out of the bus, and then two girls in their underwear roll out behind him, uh, and then what's his name? Bobby Gillespie, Bobby Gillespie comes out behind him from, from Primal Scream. I'm like, oh shit, like we're having fun. You know, uh, guys, like, oh my god. <laughs> you didn't back. know that Harmar was gonna be there. No, we didn't know he was gonna be we there. We just kept so bumping I into him. I love Primal places. Scream, so he's rolling out with like one of my favorite rock stars. So yeah. like, so just you guys are like, oh, who's in this? Van and all of us, it's our buddy. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it's like 
him and just totally underwear is like, oh, hey yeah. guys, what's up? Totally. And two totally hot girls yeah. spilling out after him. I mean, was- I also remember that backstage by the there was like this these trailers that had bathrooms and and shower stalls in them, and by this by the punk stage was like the only place I could find a place to go to the bathroom. And so I went and went to the ba- went to the bathroom there, and as I walked out, I realized that somebody had taken a dump in the shower stall in there, <laughs> and I was like, of course, of course they fucking did at the stage that's next to a half pipe. Of course they took a dump in the shower. <laughs> But uh, we also met Turbo Negro, and that was, like, one of my highlights, too. Yeah. Yeah. Almost like when we saw Wayne Kramer getting gas in Virginia. Or when we or saw North Carolina. We went to see Billy Childish in London one of the nights oh, off. Oh, fuck mm-hmm. you. Well, and, yeah, whatever. We did. I don't think any of us really. I was just kind of like, oh, it's Yeah, I mean, fine, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't into him at yeah. the time. I, I think, so I think love, Ian I was the Billy only. Childish. Yes. Ian he was, was the only him, one yeah. that was, like, mm-hmm. super excited. Was but really yeah. we're watching Billy Childish play. And I turned around, and the fucking Gallagher brothers are standing right behind me. Yeah, and I was not like, the watermelon ones, no. the British ones. I was like, oh, "Yep, that's their, that's their weird monkey mullet haircuts." Yeah. And so, yeah, I have a picture of that. That was a big moment too. for me. Yeah, oh, you have a picture of that. That was yeah. insane. Oh, wow. Yeah, really happened, huh? I I'm, I care more about freaking Billy Childish. Well, you guys got to see. And that. in the middle of that, though, these was Aust- he good? these two Australian guys, yeah, they may have been Irish great. or they may have been Australian. We can't remember. But these two brothers who were on vacation in England were totally wasted and. They were insisting that they were going to get in the tabloids, and they kept fucking with the Gallagher brothers. And th- a couple days later, there was a mention that the Gallagher brothers had been harassed by some people at this at this Billy Childish show or whatever. And we were like, "Look, it worked. They did it." Um, but uh, but yeah, I stayed with the t- like was the artist guy. Oh, Brand, um, Bruce Brand. That um, he crazy. he did the art cover. He did the cover for the White Stripes Elephant record and a bunch of other stuff. But it's he was, but more insane. importantly, he was in the head coats. Oh, right. Um, yeah. He was the drummer in the head. Well, they're all visual artists. Yeah. I mean, Billy Childish is the one who started the stuckiest movement in art. So I mean, they were they're all artists. Whatever. I'm what? just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I have to. Dude, act. The, the agenda, agenda was always pretended that we didn't band. like art. You know, <laughs> our record said no art was no art was, was used in the making of this record. <laughs> um, but uh, sorry, I'm a big Billy. I'm a big Billy Childish. No, I I no, love no Billy shakes. Childish now. But yeah. Then I just wasn't into yeah. it. You know, that was, it wasn't exciting enough. Yeah. Wasn't the guy from one of the guitar players from Blur was opening for him or Graham or Coxon, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was Graham Coxon, Billy Childish, yeah. and then it was yeah. this <laughs> band from Australia, yes. who sucked, and, and that's remember. why the Australian brothers were there. Yeah, and to I don't see remember them. what they were called. UMI, yeah. UMI. Yes. UMI. Oh my yep. god, UMI yep. were so bad. Yeah, super boring. Um, and then, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh and actually you're gonna tell me you opened up for the mummies and then I'm just gonna have to like, No, that no, no. We did not open for the mummies. No, that never the only happened. garage legends we opened for were the cramps. Oh man. That was No, we're not gonna tell that story. Yeah. That's um, not a tour story, that's Ryan a local story. story a couple of times on here. I just said that I didn't I you know, whatever. I don't Let's like see, the cramps. Raining oh. sound, we played with raining sound. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. right. Yeah, yeah, that was a big too. one. And he had to drink. Um, we played with the black um, keys. Was he awesome? no, no, oh, I got a good story. Oh, we played with the black keys and they were such turds. Yeah, oh man. man. We played with them in England and then we saw him like three days later in America when they played in Athens. And the guy like totally pretended like I hadn't just spent like an yeah. hour talking to him two days ago. I was just like, All right, whatever, dude. Tell the story when we played with the Christian band. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. God. In England. In England. Yeah, this is in England. All right, so. We didn't think there was Christian rock in England, but. But there was. Yeah. So Anglican. This is, um, uh, this was on the first English tour. It was uh, in Wolverhampton. Yep. Oh, wow, yeah. Yep. It was because Wolver- they had a, they won a big game. Yeah, well, day, it was right? our, okay, so in, in England, there's the soccer, there's like relegation. Football. Football. Yeah. Football. Football. <laughs> in, Football. In British in British soccer there's like relegation. There's like different levels. And like if you if you win your uh division you're in, you can move up to like a higher division. So they had just won the championship of theirs and they were getting getting to move up. So the whole town was empty. We could hear all these people in the distance. Because they were all at the soccer stadium. Yeah. So this is like, you know, here. Yeah, yeah, um, it would be like. It was, but do you don't you remember when they came to like storming down the street and like oh, climbing yeah. on the monuments and everything? Like they yeah. would be way yeah. beyond. It game was way. Day. It was cra- even way crazier beyond. than like an. Well, it was like if we won something. And we were carrying. <laughs> we were we were carrying. Uh, we were drinking on the street because we thought yeah, that was we the greatest thing that ever happened. Because didn't some one of the people running by me, they were like red stripe crew, yeah. red stripe crew, <laughs> red stripe crew, and we were just like oh, okay, like because we were all drinking red stripe tall boys walking down the street. So, yeah, there. we're like in the middle of downtown Wolverhampton. Oh, yeah, that was awesome. Wolverine. Nobody was going to a show that day. Like yeah. there were, yeah, 
Well, no, but it, like it was just the town was dead. I think it was yeah. also bank holiday too. Yeah, it was something. Yeah. yeah. So like everything was closed, and everyone was the streets were empty because they were all at this soccer stadium, and like we're standing in the middle of downtown drinking red stripe, and there's this giant statue of like a guy on a horse, yeah. or, or maybe a wolf or something. Somebody like on a horse because somebody yeah. climbed up on the horse. The guy on a wolf. <laughs> it was a wolf. No, 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 no. It was a wolf riding a horse. <laughs> So anyway, was yeah, it? the no. soccer. Actually, that was werewolf, werewolf. This, this was, was England. Kind of um, <laughs> when the soccer game ended, then suddenly, all of a sudden, there was just like like a we could hear this like like it was like a tidal wave coming yeah. towards us as we were walking down the street. We were just like, holy shit! Yeah. Um, but anyway, the that we had gotten to that show so early. Yeah. We had been there all day. Like our show, just walking around drinking. Yeah. Like, sh- we were playing at like n- like ten o'clock, I think. Yeah. And we had gotten there at like noon, so we had nothing to do but drink. Yeah. And like warm beer, <laughs> warm beer. And now I'm, <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm not a drinker now and I wasn't ever much of a drinker, yeah, but I got drink like, yeah, but you, when I you got did, you got black drunk. out fucking drunk. <laughs> Me and Ian Cohn were so drunk at that show that we were watching this band open for us and they were like Christian rock. Yeah. And we were just like, what the fuck? We're like, how is there? I don't know why we didn't think and there they would be a Christian like, rock band in England. Like but Christian Garage Rock at least? No, 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 no. no, no. Like, they sounded like yeah. Bush. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. First, like they Bush. Sounded it was like, just like one of those shows where you're like, oops, we got on a shitty bill. Yeah, like so that one wasn't a good one. <laughs> it was, they were sounded like Bush and they were talking about God and stuff. And me and Ian <laughs> just started heckling them. <laughs> <laughs> now, they Which was like so... So yeah, unnecessary. Yeah, so, like, it's <laughs> total ugly America. Yeah, yeah, like, and this, again, like I said, this was when everyone hated America, too. So like, they're the mm-hmm. they're the local band, and we're the headliner. In front and of me, their friends. And me and Ian just start mercilessly heckling them, and I'm just like. Like what? Like, what were you saying? Like, you fucking, you know, just like, you suck. Or like, <laughs> like that, yeah. that, like, yeah, like, yeah clever, just, just like, like no, 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 no just drunk no, and loud. No, I was being an asshole. <laughs> total American asshole. And he goes. Thank you, Captain America. Or something. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, call me Captain America. So then, uh, you know, they played. We had heckled them. Me and Ian were like, still like, we were like so mad about yeah, this yeah. band. So we went up and we we're like, you know what, man, fuck it. And we took off all our clothes except for our underwear. And we both got Sharpies and we wrote like stupid shit. Like, <laughs> Did you draw like upside down crosses yeah, on like you and pen- stuff? We were drawing pentagrams <laughs> and crosses all over our bodies. Me and Ian. <laughs> And we come downstairs just in our underwear. The yeah. other dudes are just like up on stage, all dressed in black like yeah, normal. Just, just like <laughs> yeah. And so me and Ian play, and like we walk down, we get on stage, and then somebody's like, "The Americans are in their pants." <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, no, we are not in our yeah. pants. <laughs> and then we argued with them for an hour about what pants were. Oh. Um, and that yeah. is all I remember that about is, that. Show. Yeah. So I think the best thing to do, let's so that because there's so much good stuff, let's just stop now okay. and we'll come back and do another session in a couple of weeks or whatever, okay. and we'll air the rest of it later on in the season because there's still so much good stuff. I keep thinking of other good things. I'm like Jesus, this is why whenever like we have a band in, and I'm like, so don't you have any weird fucked up band stories or don't you have yeah, any violent like, stories or don't you? Have, and everybody's always like, no, I don't know. Yeah, I'm like, like yeah, because every tour I've been in has been bizarrely insane like yeah. why would it, you do it's it? like it's like you you it's know fun. You, it's fun it's exciting no why wouldn't you I mean, talk to somebody oh, why wouldn't? that weird shit happen oh yeah you talk to a band or something they have like one really good story you're like, yeah that's great it's a great story yeah yeah but yeah this anyway is, this is more of like what you're hoping for with the band where it's like, it is apparently nobody else was as drunk or weird as the agenda but maybe or, someday like, had the weird Shit, just the mojo is well, so weird. You yeah. Know? Well, I think one of the things that we need to do is have more full bands in here. And so yeah. Just sure. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's like yeah. it, 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 it just, seeds the memories of everybody. Yeah. 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 Cause I mean, I yeah. think if, yeah, if it had just been like one of us, it, we wouldn't have gotten like, you know, yeah. So, uh, well, we all right. So we'll, different perspectives about we'll, uh, what's going on, I think. Some of them on mic and some of them off. <laughs> Um, Dan, who's not been on the microphone. I bet you can hear me. All right. Anyway, we try to run a high quality podcast here, so it, this is I'm not about really, can I? It's this is not about can I hear someone crappily in the distance? No, I'm really is, loud, and yeah, I do this distance. for work. I do I do webcasts all yeah, the time, yeah. and I'm so loud that I'm sure you can hear me. Yeah, it's not about whether I can hear you; it's about the quality of your voice. Oh, okay. It's this is a high quality podcast. Gotcha. Bill Bill puts all of his effort into this. That's why we're keeping him up so late. Okay. So what I will say now is we're going to call it now. All right. We'll we'll end this episode, this introductory season two episode, and we'll be back 
with more stories from us. Does or, anybody want to end with uh, just like a, a a one or two word teaser for some more stories? That, oh that yeah, they have. I I, I have one. Good. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna start off and say. Um, Al Qaeda youth. Oh yeah. No, Bin yeah. Laden youth. Bin Laden. Right, youth. right. Bin Laden youth. Yeah, not even yeah. Al Qaeda. Bin Laden youth. Yeah. Uh, I will say the word. Courtney Love. Yeah. Oh yeah. And Kelly Osbourne. And Kelly Osbourne. Um, I'll say garbage can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I'll, and on that, on the on the city of Detroit. And the city of Mindy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The motorcycle in the club. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Thanks for listening to the show. Load In, Load Out is a tour story podcast produced in the heart of Athens, Georgia by me, Bill Fortenberry. You can find me at BC Fortenberry on Twitter. Our hosts are Ryan Lewis and Cash Carter. Follow us at Load In, Load Out on Twitter and Facebook or check us out at kindercore.com. Load In, Load Out is produced in association with Kindercore Industries. We'll be back next week with stories from the Orlando-based band, The Pauses. If you see a band out in the wild this week, buy something from the merch table, vinyl, t-shirts, whatever. It's a great donation to the arts, and we'll see y'all next week.